So guys welcome let's see what if Naruto and Samus have a secret child movie. In an unknown location not too far from Konoha, Naruto and Sakura as well as Kiba and Akamaru arrived at the small burning debris a huge crater had left behind. They had been sent on a recon mission by the Hokage herself. To investigate and report what had happened, the team being led by Sakura arrived to the scene of burning of trees and the destruction the unidentified object had left behind. At first, Naruto was thought it was shinobi from other villages causing mayhem since Kiba was tagging along but was later informed by Sakura that it was unlikely due to the recent alliance the villages had taken, the team split as they went to investigate further, Naruto being more eager to get this mission wrapped up rushed towards the center of the crater ignoring Sakura's orders. Naruto. She sighed as the blonde blindly down towards the crater. Idiot, still charging straight without a plan Kiba grinned as he crossed his arms. As Naruto ran down, he saw a small metal container at the core of the crater, it seemed like something had broken out of it as a strange liquid substance, he wondered what the container was for as he crouched down to examine it better, as Naruto reached out to touch the mysterious piece of metal, a crushing grip on his arm stopped his motions making him wince in pain. Don't even think about it, Sakura eyed him with a scary look. Ha ha ha, almost Naruto, almost the dog owner taunted his comrade as he just looked away and pouted. Whatever was inside must be long gone now the pink-haired girl examined the container with caution using tools at her disposal, Kiba had a hard time tolerating the smell the thing emitted, while Akamaru whined at him. Huh? What's wrong boy? Kiba's eyes widened and took a defensive stance at Akamaru's message, startling his other two teammates. What is it? The team leader stood up from her observation as she noticed Kiba's alarm. It seems we're not alone they all looked around for any signs of an incoming attack, Sakura reached for her kanai as she heard a rustling in the trees and threw it towards it, for a second everything was quiet when a shadow flew out quickly towards them. What is that? Kiba yelled as it flew past him and Sakura in a flash. Where did it go? Asked the blonde as he looked around nervously, as they all looked around the area, Naruto saw something move out in the wilderness, there, moving out without the need of his teammates Naruto separated from the group in pursuit of the unidentified shadow. Naruto, wait! The medic Nin yelled out but failed to catch his attention as he was too fast, Kiba, can you trace Naruto's scent and get him back? She still had to examine at the area some more. Can't say, this strange scent seems to be covering Naruto's he stuck his nose out to try and catch a whiff of Naruto's scent, he'll see what I can do, let's go Akamaru with one bark they both went on the look for the blonde. In another part of the wilderness, bounty hunter Samus Aran had just landed in this peaceful looking planet in search of a lost metroid. This planet was far from the Galactic Federation's governing and Samus knew that she should NT be here in the first place but her sole mission to destroy as many Metroids wouldn't allow it to escape, turning her camouflage on her ship so it wouldn't fall into the eyes of those who inhabit this planet and with her Varia suit, she set out to explore the area for the impact where the Metroid had crash landed. As she spied on the pink haired girl at the crash site, she noticed that there was no sign of the creature, the girl seemed to be examining the remains the thing had left behind, Samus began scanning the area and quietly avoiding the girl, she found traces of the metroid and another going deep into the wilderness, she noticed two others join the pink haired girl, a dog and a man. Did you find him? She heard the girl speak to the two, specifically the man. No, the trail went cold he sighed, clearly bothered by something I am sure will find him, sooner or later Samus saw as the pretty girl sigh in frustration making her face a bit sour, not a good look for her. After I am finished here, we'll both go looking for him. Samus quickly fled after the trail in search for her target. She ran quickly, hopping from tree to tree as she followed the trails of faint liquid substances. As she neared the end of the trail, she heard a series of loud screams of annoyance and pain. She jumped to a tree branch and saw the opening that showed a blonde man struggling to what seemed him removing his orange jacket. Samus smiled a bit as she found it a bit humorous that the blonde was wrestling with himself, her smile dropped when he fell to the ground and she noticed the thing that was attached to his back, with quick agility she rushed towards the blonde's side and pulled the parasite that was on his back, she looked at the man that was unconscious and stared back at the parasite in her hand. Why was this thing? She lost the grip of the metroid as it fled away, she cursed herself for being so careless, the bounty hunter was about to get on its trail, when she felt something tug at her foot. He's still alive? She asked herself as she witnessed the half-dead blonde man struggle with life, Samus looked back towards the direction where the metroid had fled and then back to the man at her feet. Do don't why you are run aw away, he breathed out, looking terribly ill, he fell unconscious. Samus contemplated whether to go after the metroid or save the dying blonde man, as an unusual decision she decided to pick the blonde man and take her back to her ship to give him medical attention and try to save him, she jumped tree to tree trying to quickly get to her ship to treat him, when she arrived, 
she quickly placed him onto the infirmary bed and began working on him as fast as she could. Moments later, after a lot of complicated work she had successfully stabilized him though she was very certain he wouldn't have made it. She was glad she was wrong, saving him made her feel relief she had saved someone's life and it felt strangely good to her. She examined the blonde's facial features and wondered why he had three scars on each cheek. It made him look like some sort of feline, she wondered if they were real. The woman shook the thoughts away and remembered she still had a mission to accomplish, with her Varia suit activated, she exited the ship and went to finish off that metroid, wondering if it was alright to leave a stranger stay on her ship she sighed, she knew she was eventually going to regret this, she ran through the forest looking for a trail when she heard familiar voices. I can't believe that idiot managed to get lost, screamed the pink haired girl from back then looking a bit more grouchy than last time, she also saw the man and the dog with her as well. It's strange that his scent was totally gone the brunette man said as he petted his dog it was like he was covered by that nasty stench we found. The pink haired girl exhaled, let's head back, I need to get these back to Lady Tsunade the girl held a few vials of the substance the metroid left behind. Are you sure? I mean leaving him behind is kinda harsh isn't it? For all we know he could be in trouble? I know it's a bit harsh, but well return back with reinforcements the girl waved off besides, the village isn't too far. For all we know he could be sitting down at Ichiraku's waiting for his Kiba question her motives before looking back at the forest where Naruto had fled, he frowned. The is sun still up, Samus saw them go the opposite way her ship was, it seemed they were going back for help, maybe she should have just handed them the blonde but that would just compromise her identity, she continued her search for that parasite for all she knew it was probably feeding off some other poor living thing. Naruto groaned, he felt terrible like some sort of parasite tried to suck the life out of him, as he rubbed his head he peeked out and took in his surroundings. This place was strange to him, he saw strange glowing lights and a lot of shiny buttons. Where am I? You? The pain on his back had not faded what, was that thing? He wondered and then remembered the last thing he saw before he was out. There was something, or someone? He stood up from his bed and looked around for anyone in the small ship. Hello? His voice echoed as he called out, did that person save me? The wondered as he began to explore the ship, he stumbled upon a blue suit display, in the bottom it had a digital description. Samus, Aaron? He raised his brow some kind of armor maybe? Naruto then felt his stomach growl, hungry, and began looking for some sort of food, as he reached what he assumed was the kitchen he looked for anything that he could eat, he looked through the small storage and soon something caught his attention, his eyes widened and a toothy mischievous grin grew on his face, he looked around as if seeing if the coast was clear, with swift moves he grabbed the item in the storage cabinets and looked for some water and some heat. Whoever lives here, definitely has a great taste in food, he smiled as he started preparing a cup of ramen. Meanwhile Samus tried hard to stay conscious, she couldn't believe how quickly the metroid had mutated, when she tried to destroy it but she found it difficult just trying to fight it, it had a strange red glow to it that acted as a shield when she had attacked it only fired back twice as strong damaging her suit severely, she had no choice but to retreat, the blonde woman needed to get back to her ship, she was so close but her vision was fading. Almost, there she saw the ship coming into view as she reached out to her arm, she pressed a few buttons to open the ship's entrance, when she entered the ship she made her way towards her recharge system but when she got there she saw the blonde man staring at her with his mouth wide open as he was about to eat the last cup of ramen. Teeth that's, M mine, with a loud thud, she fell to the ground startling Naruto. Ah, oi, are you okay? He panicked with cup in hand hey? Naruto placed the cup on the floor and went towards the giant suit of armor's help, with no idea to remove the armor he began to panic even more. The thing completely covered the person from head to toe, with no sign of removing it. Oh man, oh man, what do I do, TT Ibeo? Naruto saw the pod next to him and thought that maybe that's where this person was heading towards, proving it was too heavy, Naruto thought up of an idea. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. As five Naruto's stood around the person in armor, they bent down and began to pull but even with that many clones it proved to a bit of a challenge. Ga. This is harder than helping Shizun Nichan pull Ba Chan when she's drunk and knocked out. With one push of a button the pod opened and the group pushed the heavy half a ton machine inside, once inside, Naruto pressed the button again closing the glass surface, seeing the pod starting to repair the suit of armor relieved Naruto, hoping the person inside was recovering. Maybe I should get Sakura Chan to take a look he then remembered that he had left his team crap, they must be looking for me right now. With no idea on how to exit the ship Naruto sighed, he'll accept my beating later. He picked the cup of ramen off the floor and walked towards the pod. Right now ill look after you he grinned as he tried to peek inside the Samus visor trying to get a view of the person's face but was unable to due to the glare. For a moment, Samus opened her eyes to see someone staring at her with a big smile, the smile made her feel warm inside, something that she didn't feel often it was comforting, 
her eyes became very heavy again and slipped into a deep sleep. Meanwhile in the Hokage's office, you what? The Hokage's voice boomed. We well you see M Master, Naruto ran off and we tried looking for him but we couldn't find HM Sakura said sweating bullets and Kiba was just scared shitless. Is this what Naruto deals with every day? Kiba though, Tsunade rubbed her temples, thinking thoughts of the worst, had the Akatsuki managed to capture him? No, they wouldn't, not now at least, she shot a glare to both of them. I want Naruto here, now, and with that she literally kicked both Chunin out of her office, looking through her drawers she grabbed a fresh bottle of sake and began to chug it. That kid is all I got left, she stared out of the window somberly. Sakura felt guilty for abandoning her fellow teammate, she wasn't thinking about them and now she regretted leaving Naruto behind, she wasn't going to be useless again, she turned towards Kiba with a mean look of determination. Kiba. I need you to round up either Hinata or Neji, we are going to need their Baikugan for this, he'll meet up with you at the gate in 10. Kiba just slowly nodded as he stared at the medic Nin before leaving in searching for a Baikugan user. No way can I tell Hinata about this, he'll have to go with Neji. After a few hours of waiting for something to happen Naruto was starting to get agitated, there was hardly anywhere to sit besides the driver's seat and there was nothing to do in this small ship. Naruto went up to the pod once more and knocked on the glass. Oh, mister are you gonna be okay? He paused and waited for some kind of answer before knocking once again hello? Samus felt something hitting against the window glass but she couldn't quite quest what, was she dreaming she asked herself, or was this the afterlife calling for her? Who's, knocking? She opened her green eyes to come face to face with pair of blue eyes, which she thought were much more beautiful than hers. Whose, eyes, are those? Naruto stopped tapping the glass as he was the head of the armor move a bit, the person was alive if the suit moved. Hello? He called out again hoping for a reply as Samus' hand slowly moved up to the glass, Naruto smiled as her hand was on the glass and he too placed his hand where hers was, he then noticed that the hand was now pointing at something now. Huh? Naruto looked at the direction it was pointing to, the button? She slowly nodded enough for Naruto to notice, as he pressed the button the glass window soon began to open. He immediately saw the giant suit of armor standing about a foot taller than him making him sweat nervously, he stared at it when it didn't seem to make any movements, the thing then began to move putting one foot forward and then the other. Uh, hi ya. The blonde's enthusiasm seemed contagious as it got even Samus to raise a smile. Hell she was unable to finish as she fell to the ground still feeling weak, I am still not strong enough to stand. She failed to notice the blonde below her getting crushed by her heavy varia suit, please, get off the blonde mumbled catching her attention. Samus' eyes widened in embarrassment as she rolled off him and leaned up against a wall. I am sorry Naruto rubbing his rib cage as he felt like he might have broken a bone, shaking the pain away he once again stared at the person in front of him with a smile. Hey, thanks for taking care of me back then, I felt like that thing was gonna drain the life out of me. The woman stared the blonde before her, he was somehow making her heart race, she shook away her hesitation and spoke out loud. You are welcome, she said with some sense of formality, and thank you for treating my wounds as well, I am very grateful. Naruto just scratched the back of his head smiling at her, I really didn't do anything but put you in that tube thing. In any case, I am still grateful. Naruto was flattered that he was being thanked by some kind of strange person in a weird metal suit, oh. He realized he hadn't introduced himself yet and thought now was the best time to. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Pleased to meet you Naruto stuck his hand out for a friendly shake as he smiled on, Samus hesitated, should she get involved with people in this planet? She might as well if they saved her life and ate the last cup of ramen she had left, with a press of a non-existent button she released her Varya suit and revealed herself in her zero suit form stunning Naruto, he couldn't help but to gape at her form. Samus Aaron she took his hand and shook it with a small smile, Naruto still shocked, he stared with widening eyes at the fact that the person inside was actually a female rather than what he suspect to be a male she was very pretty too. Your AA girl? Samus didn't know it was that much of a surprise as she saw the blonde gaping at her, probably it wasn't that clear to him before. Yes, is that a problem? Naruto furiously shook his head and secretly eyed the girl up and down, not only was she smoking hot but she was so beautiful, she put Sakura's looks to shame, he did what most boys did when they saw a pretty girl, he blushed. After they got the introductions over with, Samus needed to explain what she was doing here, where they were and what that thing was doing to him when it was attacking him, she had to explain that she was from outer space which made Naruto think she was an alien ready to invade their planet but was later convinced that was just silly. So you're a bounty hunter, right? Samus nodded and that thing that attacked me is what you're after? She then again nodded, could it be possible that it would attack again? Samus nodded once more, any life force could be in danger, 
the one that attacked you was merely an infant Naruto cringed as she told him that the flying bug thing was barely in its baby form, he wasn't going to let that thing harm anyone else, he decided to help. Well let me help you then, Samus shook her head, there was no way she was going to let an outsider interfere well why not? I know the area pretty well and I can help you get through place quicker she had to admit he had a point but working with someone wasn't something she liked to do. I am sorry the answer is still no Naruto pouted which made Samus smile a bit she thought he was a bit childish, this mission is too dangerous, I cannot worry about the safety of others it will only slow me down. Well I can't let you go alone, after that beating you took I won't allow you to go alone. It was true, she was still recovering from her last encounter with the evolved Metroid but that didn't mean Shed take help from a civilian. The answer is still no Naruto frowned for a moment but then came back with a smile, you know that ramen I ate was your last cup, what if after we destroy this thing I take you out for some of the best ramen you'll have in your life, huh, how about it? The blonde woman was getting annoyed by his constant offers, she had to just telling that no was the answer and that was final. I am shinobi and I can look after myself, trust me. Samus opened her mouth to speak but was unable to as she was lost in his eyes. She closed her mouth, the look on his face showed that he meant it, she had nothing else to say, fine you win, you can tag along but you are under my command, you will only do what I say when I say it, you got that? Yes, ma'am Naruto saluted, making the blonde woman sigh, what have I just done? And with that the new form team of two had set out to find that growing parasite. Hours later both Naruto and Samus find themselves right outside the parasite's nest, a giant tree that stood tall as its root make it stand up and it created a small underground passage, with Samus back in her power suit she was able to scan the surroundings, finding many traces of the metroid, she was sure that the thing would be hiding here. It's definitely in here as Samus scouted the area Naruto was getting impatient, this wasn't his style and he disliked waiting, he pouted as Samus continued looking around and then that's when he thought of something. Hey, what's your favorite food? Catching the woman of guard, she raised an eyebrow under her helmet. We're on a hunt, be quiet, she said sternly causing the blonde ninja to pout and moan come on, tell me. She sighed, I don't know, noodles I guess really? Naruto jumped to her side, making her jump in her suit a bit what kind? What kind? There's other kinds? Naruto was surprised as she didn't know that there were more than plain ramen, Samus had only had cup ramen since she didn't really try new things when she traveled so she was surprised there were different kinds of ramen. That's it, after we're done here I am taking you to Ichiraku. Naruto yelled gripping the woman's metal hands with great strength, both Naruto and Samus did not notice the big creature that stood behind them, it was the metroid but it was much more different and much larger, Naruto slowly turned to the creeping monster he screamed as it growled, this thing was completely different than when he last saw it, it was a giant beast that stood on its four legs and had a large mouth much like crocodile, it snarled at them as it had spotted its next meal. I am possible Samus eyes widen, she couldn't believe how quickly the metroid had gotten to its final stage, how? The creature lashed out at them and both Naruto and Samus were barely able to avoid her attack, Samus fired a few shots at the mother metroid but it proved to be ineffective, Naruto formed a familiar hand sign as he jumped towards the monster. Taju cage bunshin no jutsu. The 50 something clones all threw their explosive kanai at the creature only have it bounce off its hard shell skin and explode barely scratching it, the metroid opened its mouth and took a bite at the clones destroying their existence. Damn, that thing is tough, Naruto said as he landed next to Samus. Aim for its stomach, that's its weak spot but keep your distance. She warned him while configuring her arm cannon, it'll slow it down. Samus switched her normal missile weapon to ice missiles as she strafed to the opposite direction of Naruto's, the mother metroid shifted its attention towards Samus as she fired missiles at its mouth angering it, as Samus jumped away from the metroid's attack she saw Naruto charging a glowing ball of light in the palm of his hand much like her energy beam. Here take this. Naruto charged with his ninjutsu towards the monster's belly as it was occupied with Samus. Rasengan. The mother Metroid howled in pain before attempting to attack the blonde, Naruto. He stared with wide eyes at the creature as it was about to body slam him. Samus in the air, bounced off the wall and used her grapple beam to pull Naruto away from the Metroid, although Samus pulled a bit too hard, the blonde slammed against the wall. That, hurt, Naruto mumbled as he slowly slid down, I told you to keep your distance, Samus scolded they had to deal with the monster and recklessness would not be tolerated, she knew having him tag along would only make things harder, Naruto rubbed his nose as he came to Samus side, both of them staring down the metroid. I have an idea, Samus glanced at Naruto, she wasn't going to have him mess this up I told you, we're doing this my way if we. Please, just trust me she saw as the blonde stepped forward with a load of determination and confidence, it'll take this thing out with one blow. His hands formed the familiar cross as his blue eyes turned into slits, I know I may not look like it but trust me, 
I am strong. Cage Bunch and No Jutsu. He summoned a couple of clones and with the help of two, they began to form another ball of light, this one would be much bigger, this thing will attack anything in its way, that means the village would be in danger, I cannot allow that to happen. The orb in his hand began to make a loud screeching noise, it'll finish it off and get you the best ramen you'll ever taste. Samus stared at Naruto, something seemed different about him, his words made her feel safe she blushed as he talked about food in such dire moments like this. Food and Rosin Shuriken the big shuriken-like ball hovered over Naruto's hand, wait for my signal. Naruto charged towards the roaring monster as he held the giant Rasengan, wait, I told you not to charge it straight on. As the mother Metroid saw Naruto running towards her, she opened her mouth and crushed the blonde in the ground he stood on. Naruto. Samus' eyes widened as she cried out, she felt her heart sink, the beast swallowed the piece of land taking Naruto along with it, the creature lifted its giant maw up swallowing everything up, for a moment. Samus saw flashbacks of her past as it pained her to see another person lose their life, she fell to her knees as she was overwhelmed, did everyone around her just end up dying? Don't underestimate me. The blonde in the suit quickly looked up in the air to see Naruto, alive and well, he thrust his palm with the rosin shuriken and planted it onto its eyes before quickly escaping the explosion, the crocodile-like creature thrashed around in pain as it was blinded, it tossed and fell on its back exposing his belly. Samus. Now. With a great push the clones launched Samus into the air giving her a clear shot of the Metroid's weak spot, with one accurate charged shot, Samus managed to place one good plasma beam on the belly of the beast, the creature cried out as it hid directly on its weak point. Not done yet, following the Samus beam, Naruto fired one of his own projectiles while in his sage mode, Rosin Shuriken. The mother Metroid howled loudly once more before dropping dead, Naruto huffed as he smiled at the stunned girl in armor. She couldn't believe how he had managed to defeat a Metroid in this level, she saw Naruto winced in pain as he held his hand which was all burnt, Samus rushed towards his side to check on his condition. Your hand, are you okay? She worried as his hand and arm were practically charcoal. He he he, I am fine, this is nothing he winced in pain which didn't go unnoticed by Samus no you're not, we need to get you medical treatment, Naruto knew he was forbidden to use the rosin shuriken up close, at the moment he wasn't thinking and just wanted to impress Samus by acting cool and reckless. Damn, Oba Chan is gonna kill me for sure. Naruto. Said blonde saw Sakura, Kiba, and Hanabi running towards him. The blonde turned to see his friends run towards him. Oh, you guys already missed all the action. He noticed them all got into a defensive stance as they saw Samus stand over the limping blonde, assuming she was an enemy. It's okay. She's a friend, carefully nodding. They took the blonde's word and relaxed. Sakura went to Naruto's side and saw the condition of his arm. She had definitely seen this before. Kiba and Akamaru stared at the dead gigantic monster and whistled at its size, what the hell is this thing? That's that thing from the crater Naruto answered as Sakura started healing his wounds, no way, this thing? Naruto's eyes wandered to the Hyuga girl quietly standing next to Samus, her eyes narrowed as he stared at her, what? Uh, who are you again? Idiot, that's Hanada's little sister, Hanabi. Kiba yelled before pointing at Samus, more importantly, what is that? I told you. She's a friend and I was helping her take that monster out Naruto pointed out as everyone but him stared at the armored woman. So there's a person under there, Kiba asked, trying to find any human resemblance he looked at her, Hanabi activated her by Kugan and saw the woman behind the armor, it seems like there is Sakura completed her treatment but advised Naruto he would need a full examination when he gets back to the village, Samus took this chance to introduce herself properly. Yes my name is Samus Aaron, pleased to meet you, friends of Naruto. It talks. Kiba stared at her with wide eyes while Naruto frowned and slapped himself, dragging his hand across face of course, she talks. Pleased to meet you, Samus san I am Sakura Haruno she smiled and pointed towards her other companions, that's Kiba and his dog Akamaru, the girl with the white eyes over there is Hanabi. Naruto smiled as he went up to them, well me and Samus gotta get going now catching her off guard he grabbed her arm and pulled her away as they made their way towards the leaf village. Wait what about this thing? Kiba pointed at the huge monster behind them. What about it? It's dead Naruto said without looking back, well well meet up back with you guys in the village, I am sure Oba Chan must be pretty mad. As Sakura stared at the two disappearing into the forest, Hanabi couldn't help but frown, the only reason she decided to tag along was to see the hero of Konoha everybody had been talking about in action, in the end she only got to see the aftermath of his power, why is Hanada so hung up on this guy anyways? Oh well. Wait till she gets the news that he is hanging out with some armored chick Hanabi grinned at the thoughts of the blonde falling for a girl who hid in armor, yeah, like that'll happen. With Naruto and Samus, wait Naruto, I have to return to my ship and recharge my shields. 
Samus pulled away from the blonde's hold then deactivated her armor and decided to travel in her zero suit. Naruto understood and began to follow Samus but was stopped by her, I am sorry but this is where we part ways Naruto raised a brow, but you don't know where the village is at. What I meant was that, this is where you and I return to our ordinary lives, it was an honor working with you Naruto Uzumaki she stuck out her hand for him to shake but Naruto just stared at it. Wait you can seriously be leaving now, we're just getting to know each other. My mission is complete and I have no other reason to stay on this planet. Samus didn't realize how her words managed to hurt the Uzumaki boy until she heard them out loud, he had just made a new friend and now she already wanted to leave just like that, oh. What I meant is that I mean I am very busy and as she stopped as she noticed the blonde boy eyes, they were hurting and she was the one who had caused them pain, like a hurt puppy, the sight was unbearable to her to see those eyes in pain made her feel horrible and guilty. Be you but I guess I can hang out here for a while, she said hoping he would smile and as if nothing had happened, he smiled a wide toothy grin. All right, he jumped, then let's go, it'll show you every good part the village has a well what's left over, he he he. He pulled her hand causing her to blush a bit, she felt like that's all she had been doing since she was with him. They both made their way towards the gates of Konoha. After Naruto and his new friend had left Sakura and the others behind. Sakura took the opportunity to examine the humongous monster they had left behind. The pink-haired girl decided to collect some more samples so they could determine what exactly this thing was and what more they could learn about Naruto's new friend. Carefully checking if the thing was actually dead, she moved towards its stomach or what was left of it, Sakura grabbed a few vials from her bag, she then began collecting a few liquid samples, Kiba and Hanabi watched as the pink-haired girl bravely went near the giant monster's stomach to obtain a bit of evidence, Kiba clutched his nose as the monster's stench was unbearable for his sensitive nose and his eyes were ready to burst into tears. Man that smell, it's disgusting, well this should be enough, it'll get this to master. As Sakura safely placed the vials back in her pouch she motioned her team to move out, hopefully they would give her some answers about the armored woman, she had yet to see the woman behind the armor but she could tell she wasn't someone Sakura could easily trust, the team nodded and fled the area, when Sakura and her team left the scene they failed to notice the Metroid babies moving towards the carcass. Meanwhile both Naruto and Samus were making their way towards the village, Naruto with a big happy smile practically jumped around alongside the armored woman, as Naruto blabbed about how excited he was to give her the tour of the village, Samus was checking up on her current status, while in her suit, she scanned her energy reserves. Shields aren't too low but still my body feels worn out after that beat down I took. She sighed barely catching the blonde next to her ask her something, I am sorry Naruto, I wasn't listening what was that? Naruto pouted slightly, he had been ignored but that didn't stop him from smiling at her. I asked you if you were hungry right the moment Samus' stomach chews the wrong time to growl, hearing her stomach growl through her suit made Naruto's smile grow even bigger into a mischievous one. Well that answers my question, trust me you are gonna love Ichiraku ramen, it's the best ramen shop you'll ever come across with. Deactivating her suit, she nodded and gave him a small smile, I am looking forward to it her eyes then laid at the open giant gates of Konoha, she was amazed at the size of the large size of them, Samus jumped as Naruto startled her, we're here, Entering the gates she saw what looked like a village working hard rebuilding itself, she was about to ask Naruto when he beat her to it. The village is a bit in rough shape, he he he, but don't worry it's still a pretty damn strong one. As they made their way towards the Hokage's office, the two Chunin guards saw them enter, both Katetsu and Azumo couldn't help but to gape at the pair. Since when did Naruto get himself a girlfriend, after what he's done, I am not surprised, I've heard he's got his own fan club now. Ha! Huh. Knowing Naruto. He probably is unaware of all the girl throwing themselves at him. Hope they don't get jealous they got competition both Chunin laughed. The thought of Naruto Uzumaki having his own fan club was pretty hilarious. The thought of him actually having trouble with it was even more hilarious. Walking around the streets of Konoha, Samus was fascinated by this world's culture everybody seemed very friendly. She noticed how everyone acknowledged Naruto with extreme politeness. Her thoughts lead her to believe he was someone very important. Though at first look she didn't think Naruto would be like that. Maybe he was well known because he was very friendly and his personality was very warm. Both then blondes arrived at the Hokage's temporary office, Samus figured that the Hokage was someone of high authority, their leader, she was to be in her most well-mannered behavior otherwise things would end up badly for her, clearing her throat and straightening herself, she readied herself to meet this Hokage that Naruto talked so much about, with one foot to the door, Naruto kicked the door open startling not only Samus but the blonde chugging on a bottle of sake. Brat, what did I tell you about barging in here like that? Oh Bachan, you just don't want anybody to see you drinking. 
The blonde waved off casually as the blonde woman behind the desk glared at him. Samus was completely shocked at Naruto's entrance and how he talked to his superiors. She then sweat dropped when she saw him on the floor with a couple of lumps on his head. Looks like she's no pushover Tsunade's attention was then adverted to the blonde woman standing in front of the door. Oh I am sorry and who might you be? Samus shook her thoughts away and lightly bowed. She was then about to speak when Naruto jumped up and spoke for her. She is my friend. Her name is Samus Aran and we both like ramen. Tsunade raised her blonde brow at this. She had never met someone who loved ramen like Naruto did. Her eyes then examined her attire and realized it was something she had never laid eyes on. Regaining her composure she cleared her throat and introduced herself. Pleased to meet you, I am Tsunade, Hokage of Konohagakure. She is not from this village or any other village Bachan, heck she's not part of this planet TT Ibeo. Before Naruto could go any more, Samus decided to cut in. Please Naruto, she placed her hand on top of his shoulder and gave him a small smile. I can take it from here she then stepped forward and properly introduced herself, my name is Samus Aran, I am a bounty hunter. My mission was to track down a dangerous bioorganism called a Metroid. I was eventually lead to this planet, where I encountered Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde woman glanced towards the smile face Naruto gave her before continuing her story. It seemed that the Metroid had attached itself to him. I was able to successfully remove it before it killed him. Yeah Ba Chan. She totally saved me from that thing. Tsunade lightly glared at Naruto for interrupting. The blonde shinobi flinched before shutting up. Samus gave Naruto a reassuring smile at his words then turned back towards the blonde woman. We eventually teamed up after so much begging. Tsunade, having enough of him, tossed her empty bottle of sake towards the blonde making him fall back and effectively shutting him up. The tremendous force Tsunade had put into the throw surprised Samus and mentally sweat dropped at the blonde laying on the floor as he groaned. Together we were able to defeat the creature and complete my mission but then Naruto, she hesitated, not really sure how to say her next words, invited me to, try out this village's ramen. Samus lightly blushed at her last words. Tsunade caught this and lightly smirked, standing up from her desk, she walked around it and leaned on the edge of the desk, she crossed her arms and spoke with a serious tone. I see, the unidentified thing at the crash site then was that creature and you two were able to defeat it before it could cause any more problems, both blondes nodded, Naruto stood up next to the girl and smiled, and you wish for permission to visit our village, correct? Again both blondes nodded. Well if Naruto trust you then I will do the same as well, Naruto's eyes widened in excitement before Tsunade finished you are welcome to our village, Samus Aran. Yash. Before she could thank the blonde woman, Samus was suddenly pulled into a tight hug before she was spun around, Tsunade grinned at the girl's expression, she saw Samus stammer protest at being held too close by the blonde ninja. Alright let's head to Ichiraku, Titi Ibeo, Naruto, she is able to go but you have yet to report, where is the rest of your team? Naruto groaned, he forgot about them and not only that but he still had to get his arm checked out, he rolled his eyes before turning towards the blonde woman, taking on a sheepish smile and scratched the back of his head. Well I kinda left them behind, he he he, but only because they were too slow. Tsunade gave him a sweet smile before she embraced him. It's okay, it'll punish them for leaving you behind in the first place she then looked over towards the bounty hunter woman who was carefully eyeing them. Before grinning at Naruto she whispered to him. First go to Shizune and get check up before going on your date Naruto's eyes widen. A scarlet blush invaded his cheeks at the Hokage's words. She laughed at the boy and then pushed him towards Samus. Once they were outside Naruto sheepishly smiled at the blonde girl. His cheeks were a shade of pink. I just need to go with Shizune Nichan before we can go get that ramen. Hey while we are there she can get a look at you too. Before Samus could respond, she was once again pulled by Naruto. He lead the way towards the village's temporary infirmary. Upon arrival they came across a worn out looking Shizune, she gave her best smile to Naruto before greeting them. Oh Naruto-kun, good to see you back Lady Tsunade was very worried about you. Yeah we just came back from Ba Chan's, anyways she sent us to get check up before we can go to Ichiraku's. Shizune raised a curious brow at the girl in blue, Naruto slapped his forehead at his stupidity before motioning towards her. This is Samus Aran, she's an awesome bounty hunter who likes ramen. Shizune nodded politely before extending her hand, Shizune. Pleased to meet you Samus San. The blonde girl extended her own hand and shook the dark haired woman's. As soon as they got the introductions out of the way. They entered the small tent and Shizune began treat Samus first behind a screen so Naruto wouldn't see. She was amazed how her body felt more relaxed and her minor cuts and bruises had been healed. She was fascinated by how magically she had healed. Apparently they used some strange spiritual energy called chakra. After she was done treating her wounds. Shizune attended Naruto next and unfortunately for him, his condition was much more serious than Samus. 
Naruto-kun, your arm, she paused, looking at him with worry in her eyes, you didn't use that jutsu up close did you? The blonde couldn't do anything but faintly smile at her, making Shizun sigh, Samus however was completely lost, she couldn't help but to worry a bit as she overheard their conversation. Well it isn't in a bad condition but I am going to have to bandage it up, so please do be more careful and avoid using that jutsu like that again. Luckily the Kyubi must have healed him before it could have done any permanent damage. When Naruto came out of the screen he had his hand wrapped in white bandages, Shizun scolded him not to overexert himself, after they were all done she smiled and bid the blondes farewell, as they walked, Samus was concerned about his arm and decided to ask him. Naruto, your arm, is it going to be okay? Huh? Oh yeah this is nothing. He winced when he carelessly slapped his arm, Samus noticed this but chose to stay quiet though she wished she hadn't. Samus didn't know how to handle this, she didn't know how to care for people. Back in the Hokage's office, Sakura and the rest of her team faced a pist of Tsunade. All were frightened by the slug princess glare even Hanabi. Tsunade tired for the day's side and slumped back into her seat. Sakura, being the team leader, carefully stepped forward to gain her master's attention. The blonde woman narrowed her eyes as she rested her cheek on the palm of her hand. M Master, I collected more samples that monster left behind, Sakura said. Reaching into her pouch she pulled out three blood red vials, along the way however, they somehow turned into solid crystals, I am not very sure how this happened, these are very different from the samples I first collected back at the crash site. Tsunade took the vials from Sakura, she closely examined one and noticed that it was a bright red crystal as if it was frozen liquid, the bright red crystal made her feel that it was a familiar chakra but not just any kind chakra, she felt demonic chakra, the Hokage's face then became very serious at this and looked back towards Sakura and her team. Sakura, take this to Shizun, I want her to analyze these samples as well as the ones from before, tell her I want results as soon as possible. Understanding the seriousness of her words, Sakura nodded and left with her team to Shizun's camp, when they left, a woman with straight purple hair and a cat mask appeared before Tsunade. I want you to bring Naruto Uzumaki, this matter is urgent. The Anbu woman simply nodded, and make sure he brings the blonde woman with him. She is not an enemy so do not treat her like one but do be careful with that being said the purple headed woman disappeared out of the room leaving the Hokage to her thoughts. Just what I need more trouble before war meanwhile finally arriving at the Ichiraku stand, Naruto screamed to the old man before noticing a girl sitting on a stool enjoying her meal. The girl with indigo hair however froze upon hearing Naruto's voice, her pale eyes widened, she slowly turned trying her best not to faint. Oh, Hanada? The three just stared at each other before the old man appeared behind the counter. Oh Naruto! What can I get you? Naruto snapped out of his thoughts and answered him with two miso soup bowls to start, then the blonde turned his attention towards the girls. Hanada! Surprised to see you here, Naruto took a seat to Hanada's left while Samus sat to her right, the blonde then remembered he hadn't introduced them yet. Oh I forgot, Hanada this is Samus, Samus, Hanada. Hanada Hayuga, pleased to meet you, the timid girl lightly bowed in her seat as she introduced herself. Samus noticed the girl's uncomforted look, nodding she introduced herself as well. Samus Aaron, pleased to meet you friend of Naruto before Naruto could speak, he was greeted by a naked brunette girl with clouds covering her privates, she pouted her lips and winked, blowing him a kiss. Um, Naruto-sama what do you think? Naruto's cheeks reddened at Konohamaru's bad timing. Closing his eyes to mask his perverted excitement, Naruto hit the girl upside the head cancelling his henge. Samus was surprised to see that the girl was actually only a boy in disguise, she then looked to see Hinata furiously blushing and staring intensely at her lap, while she smiled at the girl's cute expression, she couldn't help but also give a small giggle at both of the boys as Naruto scolded him for using that perverted form, the entire scene was very funny to her. Sorry boss, I just wanted to show you my new and improved jutsu. Before he could say anything else, Moegi stomped inside and was radiating a large amount of killing intent. Konohamaru, she shook in anger, scaring the boy he took shelter behind Naruto using him as a shield. As the orange haired girl chased around Naruto to get her teammate in a comical fashion, Hanada hesitated to converse with the blonde girl next to her. So so how do why you know Naruto kun? Oh we've only just met today she nervously smiled, trying to come up with a way to explain I guess he assisted me on my mission. Konohamaru get your ass over here, Moegi screamed, Naruto then finally managed to get the boy away from him making him fall under Moegi's wrath. She grabbed him by the collar of his shirt and glared at him. He was about to get it, pulling away from her grip. Konohamaru luckily slipped off but managed to bump into Hinata pushing her off her seat, time slowed for Naruto, his cheeks grew red and he felt a small nosebleed coming, he witnessed Hinata had been pushed towards Samus, crashing into her making both girls lock lips in a kiss, 
the same scene when he was 12 was happening before his very own eyes except it was girl on girl not boy on Sasuke, both of the girl's eyes widened before quickly pulling away. I am so 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 sorry, I didn't mean to I was poo pushed and I really didn't meant for that to happen. The dark haired girl trailed off, she felt like she could die in embarrassment, Samus however, didn't panic like Hinata she wore a small blush and told the girl it was fine, Naruto was about to give her a hand but Hinata quickly stood up and ran out of the ramen shack. Sorry about that I didn't Konohamaru was bonked on the head by Moegi, she blamed him for making Hinata leave, pulling on his blue scarf, the orange haired girl dragged the boy away to give him his punishment, Naruto could only scratch his head and wondered what had just happened, he sighed, turning to the only person left, he reached his hand out and helped her up. Sorry about that, Hinata can be a little weird but she's very nice and Konohamaru, well he's just a bit of a troublemaker who looks up to me. It's fine, I can see you have many friends Samus felt a bit of envy. Naruto seemed to have plenty of friends and many people who cared about him, while she didn't have anyone, her attention was then caught by the whiff of the warm aroma. Here ya go, two miso ramen bowls, Tuchi placed both bowls in front of them, Samus' mouth started to water the food in front of her looked incredibly delicious and the smell was unlike anything she has ever smelled before, both blondes reached for chopsticks only to touch each other's hand, Naruto smiled and offered her to go first before he got his. Samus and Naruto were about to dig in until an Anbu shinobi interrupted their meal. Uzumaki Naruto the Hokage wishes to see you ah come on can't you see we're about to eat? I am sorry but the Hokage stated this was a matter of urgency, she also wanted you to make sure you bring your friend. Naruto groaned loudly and slammed his head on the table. He sighed and mumbled something about the day he becomes Hokage interrupting his meal would be illegal. He had no choice but to obey, Samus felt the serious tension the person in the mask made, she suspected something was wrong and it most likely involved her by the way the woman referred to her. The Anbu escorted both blondes to the Hokage's office where they were met with Tsunade and Shizune, both looking very serious, Tsunade looking a bit more serious as her fingers entwined, she stared at both blondes but more at the blonde girl in the blue suit. Ba-chan what's the big deal we were in the middle of our? Tell me what are your true intentions with Naruto? The question made Naruto confuse, Samus was taken back by it however, she felt the atmosphere become much more tense, did they suspect that she was going to harm the blonde? The blonde girl was about to answer when Naruto cut her off. Baba chan. What kind of question is that? Naruto stuttered. Tsunade noticed the pink blush spread across his cheeks. She wanted to tease him about it, but she knew it wasn't a time for such trivial matter. Samus stood forward and told Naruto with a reassuring smile she could take care of herself. I know I am a guest in your village and I am to cooperate with you, but I don't see what you could possibly mean by that. Naruto and I are nothing but mere hunters who work together. Nothing but mere hunters who work together her words hurt, Naruto was sure they had become friends and hearing Samus say they were nothing but mere hunters working together was very cruel, he decided to bit his tongue for now and get to the bottom of Tsunade's question. I see, Tsunade and Shizun both saw the hurt expression the blonde had when the girl had said they weren't friends, Tsunade sighed readjusted her attention to the girl. We are going to need you to give us a more accurate explanation of the creature you were hunting down, Tsunade saw the confused expression Samus had. We have found out through careful examination that the thing you call Metroid, evolved, of course, you knew that already didn't you? Yes Metroids do change form after they have drained an unknown amount of life force from living things, the one we defeated, however, evolved at an incredible rate, I am still not sure how it transformed in its final stage that quickly. Tsunade nodded, it was beginning to make sense to her and if she was right about this then there would be more trouble up ahead, signaling her old apprentice, Shizune held a tray with two samples for Samus. As she examined it herself she turned her suit on, amazing both of the women, Samus scanned both samples, she was familiar with one but the red one was something new, Tsunade cleared her throat catching her attention. As you can see one of these is obviously the same sample the metroid left behind in the impact crater, the other one, the red crystal one comes from the monster you two defeated. Samus scan showed that she was telling the truth, the red crystal seemed to have much different properties, it seemed that the parasite had lunched on something quite powerful, she was glad that the thing was good and dead now. Naruto stared at the females as they talked about the monster they had destroyed, he couldn't help but ask as this was confusing for him. Okay but this thing is dead so it doesn't matter anymore, right? I am afraid that this thing is far from over Samus deactivated her suit, she had her full undivided attention now. We suspect that the Metroid had the chance to produce a small amount of offspring. It is possible that it could have produced more, I was careless, I should have made sure the area was cleared, Samus said, more to herself. Tsunade shook her head and told her not to blame herself. If there are more of those things out there then I suggest we work together to eliminate them, what do you say? 
Samus felt she worked better alone and personally she didn't want to get mixed up with other people but seeing how she was way beyond that point she had no choice but to take her offer. Ill except under one condition and what would that be? I would only like to work with Naruto Uzumaki this surprised Tsunade, what she was requesting was something she had planned anyways but was glad she beat her to it. Tsunade sighed before giving an all to familiar grin, she looked towards Naruto and saw him smiling as well, it seemed he had no objections with her request and was more than happy with it. Well then I guess that sells it then, Naruto Uzumaki and Samus Aran, your mission is to find and eliminate any remaining metroids, this mission is S rank so Naruto, no goofing around go it. Naruto nodded making Tsunade smile in satisfaction, he then raised his hand as if he was in class, Tsunade nodded, motioning him to speak, the blonde smiled sheepishly, putting a hand on the back of his head, he nervously scratched his head and spoke. Can we put the mission on hold until tomorrow? I mean it's pretty late and I haven't ate anything. The intense glare radiating from the busty blonde scared Naruto shut, Tsunade however sighed, she knew it was already sundown and sending Naruto out during the current state of the village would be too risky, she couldn't allow him to leave during the night without Kakashi or Yamato. You're right, at this moment ITD be too dangerous to send you out, and in your condition ITD be best for you too to rest and start fresh tomorrow Samus didn't understand why they'd have to wait it out till tomorrow, she felt that she should just do this on her own and start her mission as quick as possible, she couldn't allow it to wait. Forgive me but I have disagree, if we don't begin now I am afraid the metroids might evolve by then. Tsunade frowned, she was right the things could be feeding off innocent people, something however made her doubt that they would grow quickly without that special host, her eyes laid upon Naruto's confused look, she could see he was both excited and hungry, figuring out a plan, Tsunade closed her eyes and crossed her arms. Please you two rest, Naruto needs it considering his current condition, as for the metroids, he'll send a recon team and have them scout the area. In the meantime please enjoy Naruto's ramen invitation and relax for the moment. Samus opened her mouth to speak but no words came, she didn't want to wait, the visit to the infirmary healed her body but she was pretty hungry and that ramen did look pretty damn delicious right about now, closing her mouth, she slowly nodded with a stoic expression. Alright, let's go Samus. Without warning Naruto grabbed her hand and pulled her out of the office. Her face jumped in surprise at his sudden move, it seemed Naruto had a habit of dragging Samus without her consent. She stared intently at their hands she didn't really mind holding his hand she actually secretly loved this feeling, without realizing it, they were back in the ramen shack, taking back their seats, Naruto called to the old man and order once more like before, Samus decided to start a conversation while they waited for their meal, she had been curious since she had arrived in the village. Naruto? She caught his attention and turned towards her yeah? If you don't mind me asking, what is your position here? What a ya mean? I am a Konoha Shinobi Samus felt she could have word that better, Naruto being a little bit slow didn't really know what she was talking about, well it's just that people seem to be very fond of you, in some way you are a bit famous. Oh, that, I am just really strong and everybody knows me because I was prankster back then, he he he. Naruto masked his terrible past with that lousy excuse, he didn't want her to think he was a loser back then much less know his real status as a jinchuriki, so he chose to lie and tell her about his recent victory. Yeah just a while ago, I defeated this guy who was really really strong like really powerful, that's why the village is a bit messed up. Samus' eyes lit up, she was impressed by his story and the way how he described the guy meant he was a formidable foe. She underestimated Naruto's power and after witnessing it with her own eyes she realized Naruto was indeed real strong. Snapping out of her thoughts she noticed the brunette haired girl behind the counter placed the bowls of ramen in front of them. Quickly reaching for her pair of chopsticks, she grabbed a pair and split them apart. Dipping them in she picked up strands of hot noodles. She lightly blew them to reduce the heat before slowly slurping them. For a moment she paused, her mouth and cheeks full with noodles. The taste was out of this world, Samus reached for her spoon especially designed for soup and used it to try the broth. She closed her eyes at the warm taste, the blonde girl found this ramen to be work of heaven's food. In less than a minute she consumed every last bit of her meal, Naruto was right, the ramen wasn't like the regular cup of noodles or packaged ramen she had in her ship. She was about to call out for another bowl when she noticed Naruto was having a hard time eating his, he struggled holding his chopsticks with his left hand as his usual right hand was wrapped in bandages, Samus frowned, seeing him fumble with the utensils and fail to eat his bowl made her want to help him. Here let me help without thinking Samus used her chopsticks and grabbed strands of noodles, she motioned him to open his mouth by saying ah herself, unaware of her actions, she continued to feed him with a small smile on her lips, Naruto's cheeks glowed red at this, he didn't mind it being fed but was a bit embarrassed, as she blew on the other mouthful of noodles, he couldn't help but to stare at her moist lips they looked so. Kissable, 
Naruto without thinking slowly leaned in towards her lips, his lips never made contact as he heard a loud girly squeal, oh my god, you two are so cute. Naruto snapped out of his trance and looked away from the female in front of him, Samus oblivious to this only paid attention to the young girl over the counter with an eyebrow raised, Ayame waved it off and explained that Naruto usually never let anyone feed him, Samus looked towards Naruto to confirm but couldn't as he was avoiding her gaze. What the hell was that? Shed kill me if I actually tried to kiss her. After they ate, Naruto gave Samus a small tour of the village or what there was left of it, Samus had learned that the Hokage was indeed the leader of the village and that it was Naruto's dream since he was little to become the next Hokage, she saw that the current Hokage, Tsunade's face was on top of the monument along with the past leaders, she smiled inside, she could already picture Naruto's face up there. I am sure you'll make a great Hokage Naruto gave her a foxy grin as he rested his head on his arms and nodded, before they knew it, time had gone by quick and everyone was already heading off to bed, both blondes stopped at a bench and sat as they enjoyed the night sky and the stars, for a moment everything was quiet, then Naruto broke it as he was a bit curious about the blonde girl from another planet. Hey Samus. Yes. I was wondering, how space-like? I mean the planets, you visited different kinds right? How are they? Samus was surprised by his question but she figured he'd be a little curious since he has never traveled like she has, his expression was laughable, he looked like an excited child who was talking to an alien for the first time, which in a way it was, Samus looked up in thought and began to think how she could explain it. Well it really depends, some are dangerous and are very hostile she paused and she then looked at Naruto with a warm smile, other planets are very beautiful and peaceful, just like this one. Even with an imminent war coming, Naruto couldn't help but to agree, the moonlight basked them in a cool light as if putting them in a spotlight, they both shared a small laugh, both enjoying this, even though they had just met a while ago they were already becoming close friends, even if Samus didn't want to admit it, Naruto knew they were friends now, it was late and they had a job to do early in the morning and more adventures waited for them ahead. The full moon illuminated the cloudless darkened sky. Three shinobi swiftly jumped from tree to tree with great stealth. In moments they arrived to a cocoon-like tunnel, the walls, the floor were covered in slime and goo. Their coordinates had lead them here where they were supposed to scout the area, they never imagined to find the monster's place heavily decorated in their filth. The team leader held his hand motioning his team to hold position, they were not alone. A shadow quickly breezed by them before another shadow quickly pulled a shinobi into the darkness. The ninja gave a blood curling scream, the remaining two rushed to the source of his voice before they stopped when they heard a nasty bone crunching noise, one of the creatures snarled behind the bushes, and now it was just two nins and whatever was prowling in the dark, the junin leader was sweating bullets, he feared for his life and his other teammate, panicking he took out a kanai with exploding paper and threw it at the direction of the sound of the creature it had made. Die! He yelled with eyes widened in fear. The explosion calmed his fears for a bit but he knew it couldn't have died that easily. For a moment there was silence, the team leader exhaled with his lips curled into an insane smile, putting his terror aside he turned to his teammate, he was about to call out to him but then he heard the creature snarling again before he could react two shadows flew towards his way, his eyes widened when they dug their large fangs into his body, one on his chest and the other into his lower back, the junin screamed in pain as he spat out blood before they ripped him into two pieces. Ending the mon's life, the last nin, the team leader's second man heard the blood curling scream from his comrade as the unidentified creature killed his last teammate. He quickly turned back ran back where they had came from. He panicked which made him trip on his own feet falling to ground. He stood back up while crying out for mercy, this threat seemed to be way out of his hands now and he needed to get back home. Before he could make it home free, he stopped in place, he slowly gazed down and saw a big horn sticking out of his chest and covered in his blood, his eyes widened, the creature had managed to pierce his chest, he then fell to his knees, his eyes lost light just as another metroid flew to his head, his blood splattered all over his headband, staining the Konoha symbol. The next morning, Samus woke up extra early because Naruto and her had a mission to get to and wasting time wasn't something she wanted right now. The blonde girl had been giving a room to sleep for the night. It wasn't big but it was good enough, the fact that it was close to Naruto's home was perfect for her to find him with ease. Closing the door behind her, Samus exited the small room and made her way towards Naruto's home to get started on this mission, firmly knocking on his door she waited for him to answer, a few seconds went by and she got no response, she tried once more and knocked again but still no answer, Samus sighed, maybe he wandered off somewhere else, she suspected that he might be back at that ramen stand seeing how that's all he ate. With no other choice, Samus made her way towards the small ramen stand, on her way there, she noticed the looks the villagers gave her, she could hear whispers of how weird she looked and trying to guess what village she is from, it was strange, 
The feeling of being looked at because you were different was unpleasant but it was something she had to deal with as she always went to different planets. Samus decided not to think about it anymore. When she arrived at the ramen stand she did not find the whiskered blonde she was looking for, she decided to ask the girl behind the counter. Samus went up to the brunette haired girl, who looked like she wasn't in a pleasant mood and asked, excuse me but you wouldn't happen to know if Naruto Uzumaki has been here by any chance? Oh Naruto? He usually doesn't wake up this early, he might still be in bed. It seemed that the brunette haired girl's bad mood had magically vanished into thin air once Samus brought up that she was looking for the blonde. Ayame still couldn't stop smiling every time she thought back about yesterday and how she had caught Samus feeding him, just thinking about it made her all giddy. Samus sighed at the blonde sleeping in when they had an important mission, she had already been to his house and he wasn't there or at least he failed to answer. Did Ya knock real loud? From what I've heard from Sakura-san is that Naruto can be a heavy sleeper and sleep through anything. Samus had a blank expression, they both had an important task and Naruto was nowhere near ready, she guessed that in his current condition he would need the extra rest. Samus was about to turn her heel and leave when the ramen girl called out to her. Before you go why don't you eat a bowl? That way you can start your day good with something your stomach, plus you can give Naruto a little bit of time to wake up. I am sorry but I have no way in repaying you Samus said. That's okay, this one is on the house. Ayame casually waved off her money less problem and smiled. This was her chance to get some quality girl talk in the morning and get to know Naruto's new friend a bit more. Samus nodded and took her seat as the girl smiled at her before she went to the back to prepare her a special breakfast meal. Once Ayame disappeared into the kitchen, Samus couldn't help the brief sad smile on her lips. This village was so friendly and welcoming, she felt a bit bad when she finished her job here and leave. Meanwhile back with Naruto, Naruto groaned, he disliked getting up early in the morning. He always loved to get his full 8 hour sleep plus an extra 2 hours but that never really happened anymore. Somehow after all the time Sakura had woken him up and threatened to cobbler him if he fell asleep, Naruto couldn't help but to wake up early even if he didn't want to, it was like a reflex now, once the sun hit his face instead of turning the other way and going back to sleep, he woke up with a childish powder of frown, he stood up from his bed and stretched his body, trying to wake his muscles up, suddenly he remembered he had an important mission today with a pretty blonde girl. That's right the blonde thought as he pulled his black shirt over his head I wonder if she's awake? Naruto said aloud. He decided to find out for himself as he grabbed his jacket and went out the door. Naruto's eyes took a while to adjust to the sun's bright light, he made his way towards her temporary room, which was just a short walk away from his, unaware of his surroundings. Two shadows watched the blonde exit his home from the corner of another building. Once Naruto had arrived at the girl's room and knocked only to get no answer, he decided to look for her around the village. After a few minutes, Naruto saw a familiar blue in the ramen shack, he smiled and made his way towards the small restaurant. Naruto stopped when he heard giggling. He lifted an eyebrow and then heard Ayame talk as she tried to contain her giggles. I am telling you, Naruto was a real troublemaker when he was little, I remember when he tagged the Hokage monument all by himself. I couldn't believe it, he had the whole village going crazy. It seems he has grown since then Naruto heard the ramen girl agree, he thought to himself if he actually grown and that threw out all his battles and struggles he believed he had grown a stronger person even if by just a little, shaking his thoughts away he entered the ramen stand. Ayame noticed the orange pants just outside. Oh Naruto. Your friend here has been eagerly waiting for you. The brunette haired girl grinned at the blonde girl's expression, for a moment Samus eyes widened a bit before they returned to her calm expression, she cleared her throat and turned to Naruto. Good morning, I take it you just woke up? Good morning, I must have overslept. Naruto blushed and sweat dropped as he took his seat, Samus shook her head and told him it was fine, he was injured so he need the extra rest. Naruto motioned Ayame for one ramen bowl and the girl happily nodded and went to make his order, he then turned his attention towards the girl next to him. So what were you two talking about? Ayame was just telling me about your life when you were young and I gotta say, at this point Naruto was nervous that Ayame had spilled the beans about his past, you really were quite the troublemaker back then. Naruto sighed in relief, he was a handful not an orphan everybody avoided, just a handful, he smiled at Samus, I wasn't that bad. Are you kidding me? Having Junin chase after you for every prank you'd pull made you more troublesome? Ayame said as she placed Naruto's ramen in front of him, he 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 I was just that good, no one could catch me. Both Naruto and Ayame shared a laugh, it was then the ramen girl noticed something, turning her gaze towards the calm blonde girl. Samus san, we've been talking so much about Naruto, I haven't heard much about you. There is not much about me Samus stated, she actually didn't really know what to say not many people came up to her and asked about her in her life and I don't mind talking more about Naruto her gaze shifted towards the blonde as he grinned he is very amusing and very interesting. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, Ayame waved off the blonde as he frowned at her, so where are you from? She propped her elbows on top of the counter and rested her head on the palm of her hands as she listened intently. I am from a very far place, a very unheard of nation Samus smiled faintly hoping the girl would take her answer and move on. Look at the time, Samus we better get going if we want to start our mission. Naruto came up with an excuse to bail the girl, it sure didn't hurt to tell the girl that the Samus wasn't from this planet but Naruto didn't want to take any chances, he would let Ayame know when she was ready. Samus nodded towards Naruto before thanking Ayame and getting up from her seat, it was about time they got to work. Ah no fair, you guys are leaving already? Don't worry, we'll come back. Naruto waved back as the girl pouted her cheeks out like a puff fish. Ayame was actually hoping to see Samus feed Naruto again, it was so cute. Once both blondes exited the stand, they stood in the middle of the street. I am sorry if Ayame was being nosy no, it's fine, I enjoyed myself, it's been a while since I've had time for, girl talk. Samus blushed lightly at her last words, it seemed she wasn't used to saying such things that it was a bit hard to say out loud, Naruto chuckled, it seemed that the blonde girl who was all about doing her job was starting to open up a bit which made him glad. Shall we go then? Naruto nodded, they were both about to head towards the gate when they were stopped by a young girl around his age and an old man. Uhhm, can I help yo Naruto-san, may we please have a moment of your time? The young girl burst out interrupting the blonde as she avoided eye contact she stared at her feet, Samus examined the girl, her clothing suggests that she was part of the village, a common folk, she had long, light brown hair and dark brown eyes, she appeared to be young about Naruto's age, Naruto looked at Samus before looking back at the two and slowly nodding. Th thank you, Naruto-san, my my name is Akiko Tanaka the girl bowed in a polite manner as she introduced herself, she then made eye contact with blue eyes but quickly looked away, Naruto narrowed his eyes slightly and placed his hand on his chin, he tried to remember where he had heard the girl's name, the brunette haired girl glanced at the blonde enough to notice his confused look. We've met before Naruto raised a brow when we were little kids, we once played on the playground Samus looked at the blonde to get an understanding, had he forgotten about a childhood friend. Ayame never mentioned anything about this, Naruto was still a bit confused, he indeed remembered the girl she was very friendly and one of the few kids who played with him but was still wondering what she could possibly want, the girl finally made eye contact with him, she pulled something behind her back. I, I mean we wanted to give you this Naruto's eyes slowly but surely widen, he stared at the stuffed animal, it was a bunny, it had one buttoned eye as the other must have fallen off and it was brown due to being worn out, the stuffed bunny brought memories of his past, a particular one. Flashback hey you. Who, me? I don't see anyone else here. A young girl with short brown hair grinned at the blonde boy that sat at top of the playground slide, he had been there for over an hour now since all the kids had left with their parents, are you gonna go down or what? The blonde stared blankly at her before he noticed what she meant, sliding down, the girl came up to him and smiled. Name's Akiko Tanaka. Naruto Uzumaki he responded, he was still confused it seemed it was already sundown and every kid had gone home now, most parents told their kids to stay away from him but here was this girl actually talking to him, the girl smiled then looked around the empty playground before sighing. Looks like everyone's gone home she then looked towards the blonde who was staring at her, she frowned, you know it's rude to stare Naruto scratched his head and chuckled, sorry, it's just that most kids are home by now, so it's strange to see someone out at this time. Well my father works late so I sneak out sometimes she winked as she placed her index finger on her lips in a shushing manner, the boy laughed at her gesture and nodded, what about you, aren't your parents worried you're out late? Naruto frowned, before replying, I don't have any parents, so I can stay up late as long as I want he chuckled at the bright side of not having any parents, though he knew it was not something to be happy about. Oh I am sorry, I kinda know how it's like to not have a parent. Naruto saw the girl give a brief sad smile before shaking her head, well let's play, the blonde nodded and the two began to play around the playground. Over the next few hours Naruto and Akiko played together, after sundown at the same time, they would just play on the swings, go down on the slides, climb the monkey bars or just chase each other around. Naruto had a great time, it made him forget about being alone but even he knew things had to come to an end. Here Naruto stared at the stuffed bunny before looking up at the girl, what's this for? he asked. Just take it she shoved the toy into his hands and smiled. My father bought me this but I don't like stuffed animals so I thought I should give this to you. Naruto stared at the doll, it seemed brand new so her father must have bought it recently, thanks, Naruto said with a smile, no one had ever been so generous as to give him a present. Akiko. The loud voice boomed as it startled the little girl and the small blonde, she turned to see her father was in his work clothes, father, she stuttered, she was caught sneaking out late and now she was gonna get it, I was just hanging out with a friend she smiled nervously as her father frowned, 
I don't care it's late in. He suddenly stopped talking when he noticed the blonde boy next to her, his eyes widened in recognition, he knew who he was. The girl saw her father staring at Naruto. He seemed bothered by him. Father? Is something wr? The big man grabbed his daughter's arm and began pulling her away ignoring the pain he caused to her arm. Ow! Father! That hurts! She cried out. I don't want you hanging around that boy, stay away from him. The man turned to see Naruto holding the stuffed bunny he had recently bought his daughter as gift. The man gave Naruto a threatening glare before swiping the toy from the boy's hands, then dragging the girl back to their home. Naruto never saw her or her father after that day, he always did wonder why they treated him like that. Flashback and Naruto's eyes softened, he stared at the stuffed animal as the memories replayed in his head, he gave a small smile to the girl, he politely pushed his hands in front of him and refused her gift. Samus saw the brief look of sadness in his eyes, it was strange that it pained her to see the blonde who always had a cheerful smile and now have sorrow in those blue eyes instead, for some reason it made her sad as well. I am sorry but this is yours, it always has been please. The old man that stood quietly in the back came in front of Naruto and begged, Naruto's eyes widened in recognition, the old man was the girl's father from back then, he grabbed the toy from the girl's hands and pushed it towards Naruto, both Samus and Naruto were stunned by the mon's actions, the brunette girl looked away unable to face Naruto. Please I beg you, take it, the old man cried out and then knelt before Naruto bowing down to him like some kind of peasant. His head and hands were completely on the floor, tears ran down the mon's cheeks as he continuously shouted apologizes to the male blonde. Naruto was stunned by the mon's actions, the old man was crying out his apology and he didn't know how to react, he was lost and overwhelmed. Samus was also surprised by this, the old man bowed to Naruto as if he had done something wrong. Please, I beg you, it is the least I can do, after you saved my daughter, he trailed off and his tears dropped one by one they fell on the ground, I always blamed you for my wife's death. I knew you weren't the one to blame but I was a fool back then, and then the village was attacked I had lost my only daughter but but you Naruto Uzumaki, brought her back to me. Naruto listened to the old man's story, the man had blamed him like most villagers did. He was one of those who gave him that look, a look Naruto hated to see. However, he had understood why most villagers looked at him like that as he learned about his secret, he did always wish for the villagers to see him in a different way but he didn't know it would be this way. Naruto looked at the worn out bunny in his hands. His spiky bangs covered his eyes, he took one step and then knelt in front of the crying man and placed one hand on his shoulder, the old man bowing down raised his head, he saw the blonde giving him a warm smile. I forgive you those three words, Naruto never believed that one day had actually say those words to one of his people, the villagers who never gave him a chance, the same ones who always gave him those scornful looks, he had finally forgiving them. Moments later, Samus walked quietly alongside Naruto as they both headed towards the gates of Konoha. The dramatic scene was still stuck in her head as she was sure it was on Naruto's mind as well. She was shocked how a man broke down and cried for Naruto's forgiveness. She began to wonder what exactly happened. What did they do to Naruto to cry hysterically for forgiveness? Samus saw Naruto's face the moment they left the two villagers. She saw that he was conflicted with mixed emotions. She saw part of him smile like he had just accomplished something but she also saw a part of him wanting to cry his heart out. Samus wanted to comfort him but she couldn't. She hesitated to. She wanted to embrace him and let him cry in her arms if he needed to. She cursed herself for not having the strength to do so, to deep in thought she barely caught Naruto speaking to her. I am sorry Naruto. C.A. can you repeat that? She cursed herself for stuttering, she did not want to feel weak, not now. I am sorry you had to see that back there, it was actually pretty unexpected. Samus rapidly shook her head, you don't have to apologize, I understand, she paused for a second, her eyes then rolled to look at him, are you okay? Not seeing him with a real smile bothered her, she just had to find out. Yeah, it's just that, the blonde pulled one arm back and scratched the back of his head as he gave her a smile, I feel different somehow, like I've grown even if by just a little Samus gave him a small smile, she was relieved he was fine, she was about to tell him how glad she was when someone stood in front of them, the same person from yesterday, the purple haired masked woman. Naruto Uzumaki, you are to report to Hokage Sama's office immediately. The blonde frowned at this. They were about to leave the village and the old woman choose now to summon him, the Anbu ninja poofed out of existence as Naruto sighed. I guess we go to Ba Chan's Samus nodded, she hoped they weren't suspecting her again. Once they arrived to the woman's office, they saw Tsunade was extremely busy, paperwork seemed to fill the small room, she looked away from her paper and saw them standing, she rubbed her temples before taking a much needed break, Tsunade pulled her bottom drawer and rummaged through it. Alright you too. I am very busy right now so I am gonna make this quick Samus was surprised as the woman took out a bottle of alcohol at this time of day, 
We lost contact with our recon team the serious look on her face told them there was definitely something going on, your mission still stands but now if you find any sign of them you are to investigate and aid them Naruto and Samus simultaneously nodded. The Godem waved them off telling them they were dismissed. Once they were outside, Samus began to wonder if there really were more baby Metroids out there, she hoped they weren't any more but when was she ever that lucky? There are also the possibilities that they have evolved into something far more threatening than what they faced before, oh boy were they both in for a treat. Samus and Naruto were just outside the gates of Konoha, the blonde duo needed to make their way back where they had fought the mother Metroid from before if they wanted to investigate and find any clues, however, Samus needed to get to her vessel and recharge her suit's power, before they could officially start their mission, Samus needed to refuel her Varia suit. Naruto she turned to him with an impassive look, the blonde male raised his eyebrows at her before she continued, I need to stop by my ship. Naruto narrowed his eyes at her making Samus stutter into a nervous expression. WH what? She asked as she found it hard keeping eye contact at his intense stare. You're not planning to leave are you? Naruto asked with a sad frown. Samus sweat dropped at the blonde's suspicions, she now knew that he could be a total goofball at the most urgent moments, shaking her head gently she reassured him. No Naruto, I am not leaving, after all I still have a mission to complete she sighed before looking up at the road ahead and then smiled to herself. Somehow he was able to make her smile without her even noticing, it was strange but she welcomed the warm feeling. Naruto was still being a bit suspicious, nevertheless he nodded he believed her but he would keep her close to him he didn't want to take any chances, then I'll go with you Samus opened her mouth to speak but was quickly cut off by the blonde, no buts, we're partners and we stick together. Samus stood there with her jaw hanging open as she stared blankly at the blonde, after a few seconds she recovered from her frozen state and closed her mouth before returning to her proper form, I wasn't going to ask you to leave me she thought to herself whilst another smile came to her lips, dummy. Naruto then turned back towards Samus, did ya say something? Samus closed her eyes and shook her head hoping he wouldn't notice her smile, no she said as she continued to walk forward. Come on let's go meanwhile with Tsunade Shizune. Tsunade yelled for her assistant, this war was very troubling with all the extra heavy amount of paperwork, Tsunade just wanted to take a break at the moment but if she did stop her paperwork would just keep piling up. Shizune. She roared once again, then Tsunade had Naruto to deal with, this entire war was about protecting the remaining Jinchuriki if he was captured then it would all be over, she sighed, she still wondered if letting him leave the village unprotected was wise even if it was just outside the walls of Konoha, she had to take action and that's why she needed Shizune. She yes? The dark haired woman cheerfully popped her head out the door. I need you to bring me Yamato before Shizune could ask, Tsunade raised her index finger before continuing, I don't want Naruto out of the village without supervision. Without another word Shizune left to fetch Junin. Tsunade pouted as her assistant disappeared she envied her at the moment. Sighing once more Tsunade then went back to her paperwork, she frowned, this wasn't ending anytime soon and if it weren't for the damned paperwork she wouldn't have been too busy and let Naruto run off with a foreign woman, if she did anything to him Tsunade would personally send her flying back to the stars. Sighing yet again she reached under her desk and pulled a bottle of sake. What would I ever do without you she said before pressing her lips on the bottle and then taking a big chug. Back with Naruto and Samus once the blondes had reached Samus' ship, they boarded the camouflaged ship in which Samus immediately went to her recharge station leaving Naruto to roam the ship by himself, Naruto stared at the blonde woman who took on her Varia suit form as her it was being scanned and recharged, he then got glance of a room he hadn't seen the last time he had been here, he glanced at Samus who was still busy charging her suit before darting off to the room. Ha he said to himself as Naruto looked around, in the small chamber was what Naruto believed to be Samus' bedroom. It wasn't heavily decorated but it did have what any other bedroom would have, a bed, a small cabinet with a lamp on top of it and small sofa, Samus room. Naruto grinned before he sat on her single bed and happily bounced on it, comfy he chuckled before laying on her bed. Huh? What's this? The blonde said when he caught sight of something sticking out under the pillow. It was a photograph, Naruto's eyes softened and he smiled. The photo was what he believed to be Samus when she was young. She looked pretty cute her hair was shorter than it is now. Next to her was a man much older than her, it seemed like he was her father or at least that's what he guessed as the man seemed very strict looking but they didn't really look alike, Samus had her arms crossed as she pouted like a small child, the man had his hand on her shoulder as he looked into the camera with a serious look, Naruto wondered why Samus hadn't mentioned him when he had asked about her personal life. What are you doing? Samus, who was standing in the doorway, asked with a frown, she walked towards the blonde and took the picture away from his hands. I am sorry Samus, I didn't mean to he said as he scratched his blonde head. Placing the photo in a secure cabinet, Samus did not like the fact that Naruto had been looking at her private things. So who is he? 
He grinned lightly as he nudged her arm, is he your dad or something? It's none of your business she said a bit harshly, talking about Adam was a touchy subject for the blonde bounty hunter. However, Naruto wasn't going to easily give up, he wanted to learn more about his new friend and if she didn't want to talk he was gonna tease her, he then smiled once more, I bet he's your dad, or maybe your older brother, the blonde guess as he tried to form logical ideas, he must be your sensei then, am I right? I am right aren't I? Naruto didn't realize that Samus was aggravated by this. No, she yelled in anger making Naruto drop his smile, I told you this is none of your business, I would appreciate it if you would stop investigating my life as if I am your friend, we're here to do a job and nothing else. Naruto, feeling a bit guilty, looked away from her eyes, he saw the emotions bottled up inside her and he couldn't help but feel hurt when she had said they weren't friends, like a kanai to his heart. I am sorry Samus, I should nt have invaded your personal space, it'll be more considerate from now on Naruto then turned away and left her room, leaving the blonde girl to herself. Later Samus sighed, she felt horrible, moments ago she had said a terrible thing to Naruto and now as they walked through the forest, she regretted saying that to Naruto, he had treated her like a friend since the moment they had met, he was kind and sweet, Naruto was only curious and wanted to learn more about her, but Samus knew this was just a job, there was no time to get to know each other and make friends, no it was to complete her mission so she could return home. Home, she thought to herself, what was home to her anyways, her ship was the closest thing she had to a home and that was already here with her, she wondered if this planet could ever be her permanent home, she scoffed, that type of life wasn't meant for her, she didn't want to settle down, get married and live in Nice big home where they could raise their children, or did she? Deep down inside Samus knew she wanted more than that life of Hunter, her thoughts were then broken when Naruto stopped in his tracks and taking a defensive stance. This feeling, he breathed out as the air got heavy it feels somehow, familiar looking around he felt something watching them but he could find any movement. Activating her power suit, Samus decided to scan for any sightings of any enemy sightings, her readings weren't getting anything but from the looks of Naruto, he was sure they weren't alone. Naruto Samus called out to the blonde, we must be getting close but I am not getting signs of anything, can you sense something? Naruto stood still for a while before activating sage mode, Samus saw him meditating, she noticed his eyes were different now. This is, Naruto sensed them, the metroids but that wasn't what was causing his alarm to go off, along within them was the Kyubi's chakra. There over this way, Naruto ran off towards the source while Samus followed in pursuit, I've counted four of them so far. How did they manage to get the Kyubi's chakra? Naruto asked himself before it hit him, back then when the infant metroid from before had taken a taste of him, it must have gotten some of the demon's chakra, but how? When Naruto jumped onto a tree branch, he heard a low growl, he looked around but found no sight of any movement. I could have sworn I heard something Naruto, Samus called out from below, over here. Jumping down the tree branch, Naruto landed next to Samus who was still in her suit, Naruto's eyes widened in horror at the gruesome sight, blood stained the trees and bushes, the bodies of the Rakan team had been ripped to shreds. I am positive that the Metroids were looking for were the ones who caused this Samus said as she looked at her partner standing silently in the middle of the gruesome scene. These Metroids are much more different than the one from before Naruto explained with his eyes closed, they are far more dangerous and a lot more violent. Samus was a bit shocked, surprised and impressed, how had he come to that conclusion? It certainly did seem possible that Metroids could have done this but these were just babies, then again the last Metroid managed to evolve in a matter of hours who knows what stage these were in. I see Samus said before analyzing the situation some more, if they are much more aggressive than usual then there must be something special they like to feed on kneeling down to examine the strange red crystals the Hokage had shown her, she figured that this was the unfamiliar power that was the source. It would explain why they are behaving this way and why the last one mutated so quickly. At this Naruto's eyes widen in realization, he was the special juice that made them go crazy, he was what was making them more powerful, he was the source. Samus. Naruto, without another second thought, immediately called to the blonde woman. Ga. Naruto's body felt heavy, his movements were slowed as he tried to take move. Naruto. Samus called out as she raced to his side, it was when she saw the Metroid that she stopped in tracks, to her horror, the parasite had attached itself to the back of Naruto's shoulder, her eyes widened a terrifying sight, its fang were deeply embedded into Naruto's flesh sucking the life out of him. Ah! He screamed as the Metroid dug deeper and managed to impale its fang through ripping his flesh, Naruto fell to his knees and hands as he coughed out blood. Seeing Naruto scream in pain, Samus broke free from her paralyzed state and rushed towards him. Before she could even come close, Samus flipped back when she felt killing intent, another Metroid had appeared and tried to feed off her, having no time to deal with the creature at the moment, 
she rapidly fired her plasma beam hoping to slow it down with its icy effects. Gra! Naruto screamed once more, he looked to his shoulder where he could see the tip of the fang was sticking out covered in his own blood. Damn it! He cursed as every second it was digging deeper, why see can't I move? He asked himself as he tried to fight back. HNGH! His eyes widened at the strange feeling that was overcoming him. Bob Bump he heard his heartbeat echo inside him, and no he breathed out as red chakra started bubbling around his body. This, can't be. Naruto forced himself to move, he had to fight this thing, it was somehow able to draw out the Kyuubi's demonic chakra. Samus was shocked how much more feral and violent these Metroids had been. They were only three and they didn't want to go down so easily. They were faster and stronger, they had a strange red cloak around their fangs and they did not waste any time to attack, firing off a charge shot as a diversion, Samus jumped to the air and aimed at the stunned parasite before charging up and shooting a full powered beam shot. The beam shot hid directly and it was weakened, she just needed to finish it off so then she could deal with the others, before Samus could do anything else, she heard Naruto's agonizing cry of pain, Naruto. Without hesitating she fled to his side, ignoring the three parasites. Naruto's other chakra had now been leaked, his right eye was blood red and his body was half transformed into its Kyubi form, strangely, he had yet to sprout any tails yet. Naruto? Samus said as she stared in awe. His body was transforming and she was sure the Metroid was the cause of it, the blonde had to remove it, shooting it was too dangerous as she might miss and instead hit Naruto so she had to pry it off him with her hand. What? The other Metroids had sensed the original source of the power they had been looking for and attached themselves to Naruto as well, this made things worse for Naruto, in less than a minute they were able to draw out three tails, his body was almost covered in a crimson cloak, his left eye remained blue the only thing that was his original feature. The Metroids were able to control Naruto's body, sensing a threat, they used a chakra formed claw and lashed out at Samus, slamming her body to the ground. Ah! She cried out as her suit took damage, before she could rise to her feet, the chakra formed claw slapped her away, slamming her to against a tree. Saw, Samus Naruto breathed out weakly as he watches Samus get beaten up, slowly, Samus rose to her feet, her knees trembling as she tried to stay on her feet, his suit was heavily damaged. Parts were destroyed and her visor was broken revealing her right bluish green eye. Na na, Ruto the Kyubi's chakra form hand then grabbed Samus lifting her up from her feet, she tried to escape to grasp but it was incredibly powerful, she grunted and struggled in its grip, it didn't help that the red chakra was slowly burning her suit, Samus didn't know what to do, an enemy like this was too much and its power was overwhelming her, she was unprepared for this and she cursed herself for that. Ah, she screamed, damn, let go, Naruto. She called out to the blonde but he couldn't answer, he could only watch with his eye as Samus was getting destroyed. Samus punched the red cloak but it had no effect. What are you? She yelled as she thrashed in its grip. Naruto's eye widened before the crimson chakra slowly consumed his blue eye completely taking his entire body, a fourth tail then appeared. Naruto! Samus yelled, Ah, oh, I have to save you Samus told herself, having no other choice she aimed her cannon at Naruto's back where he had the four parasites clinging to him with careful precision and aim she was able to shoot without fail. Yes, she thought to herself as the Metroid she managed to hit cried in pain and backed off Naruto, now the rest. Samus took on her morph ball form and escaped the death grip from the red chakra, she rolled close to Naruto's red form before jumping in the air and landing on top of his back in her original form, the blonde girl could barely make out Naruto's form, he was covered in a strange black and crimson cloak, Samus grabbed another Metroid attached to his arm and then she pulled it off before quickly shooting multiple times. Now the two Metroids that had been interrupted from their meal were pissed and Samus noticed, she quickly dodged the first incoming Metroid as it tried to take a bite out of her, quickly charging up her power beam she shot a powerful icy beam at the parasite, killing it. Not stopping there she charged her beam once more and then rushed towards the other parasite, the Metroid also then charged towards Samus, when she saw it bare its fangs at her, Samus slid under it, as time slowed briefly for the blonde girl, she aimed her cannon at the Metroid, once she had it locked on, Samus fired point blank. It froze into a large ice cube as it flew into the air before landing on the floor in pieces. It was two down and two more to go, with her naked eye, Samus could see Naruto had taken a different form, his appearance was almost monstrous. Hold on Naruto she said in a low whisper, once the two of its kind had been destroyed. The remaining Metroids recognized the threat in front of them. Manipulating Naruto's fox form, they were able to move its tails but could not get it to actually move his entire body. The four tails turned towards Samus as she carefully approached Naruto's body. They then whipped at her and smashing whatever got in its way but Samus was quick on her feet and was able to dodge its attack. 
As one tail smashed the ground and Samus dodged, she took the opportunity to grab onto the returning tail as it lifted itself off the ground. Samus jumped away as the other tails tried to catch her, she swung from one tail to another before dropping to the ground and landing next to Naruto. With no time to catch her breath, she quickly got her feet and charged at the parasites, powering up her beam. She pulled her arm back before punching one of the Metroids and shooting it as soon as it made contact with the end of her barrel of the cannon. Yes. She breathed out heavily as it detached from Naruto's back, the Metroid then exploded into shards of sharp crystal. Samus was barely able to cover herself as some grazed her shoulder and stomach which were exposed. She winced as small shards cut her skin and flesh, it damn well hurt a lot. However she had to ignore the pain, she had to save Naruto no matter how weak she felt she had to. Noticing that it was the last one alive, the Metroid that had first dug into Naruto's shoulder snarled at Samus. Bringing back the Kyubi's tails, it chose to defend itself by shielding itself behind the four tails, Samus noticed this and prepared her beam, she then saw Naruto's cloaked covered face that was lying on the floor open its mouth, she looked around as strange dark matter started to form around the entrance of his mouth until a big ball was in front of him, Naruto then proceeded to swallow the dark ball. Gulp, Samus didn't know what it was but she could sense it was something bad. Her eyes widened as Naruto fired a massive beam at her, time slowed for her as she dodged the beam, she was lucky to avoid it with only taking small damage to her suit but even small damage was something she couldn't afford taking, her suit was already heavily damaged, she was at her limit, she couldn't go any farther, any more and she would slip, her body felt tired, heavy and beaten, she felt weak and she could barely stand. Naru, to but she wasn't going to give up, something inside her gave her the strength to keep going. Panting roughly, she had came up with a plan, all she needed now was to actually pull it off, stepping up, she once again charged her power beam, once it was fully powered, she aimed it at the tail's right where the metroid hid, the parasite prepared itself for her to fire, after that massive beam, its host needed to recharge, waiting for the right moment, Samus stared down the metroid as her arm holding the beam shook. Now, she said before she shoot and then quickly turned on her boosters. The crimson metroid growled at the incoming energy ball, as it came in contact with the Kyubi's tails, it pushed the beam hard enough to flick it away to its side. Don't underestimate me. Samus from up above yelled out as it caught the metroid off guard, she curled her fingers into a fist and then punched the parasite hard breaking off the tip of its fang as it made contact with the ground, as soon as Samus landed she rushed towards the staggered metroid and grabbed it, pulling with whatever little strength she has left, she managed to pry the parasite off. I did it, she said surprising herself, she had tricked the metroid by using the same tactic Naruto had used Shish had even used the same line, she blushed and was glad he didn't see that. Ringing out of Samus' hand, the metroid snarled at Samus who was deep in thought before choosing the time to escape, Samus knew that it should NT escape but she didn't have the energy to chase after it, all she needed at the moment was Naruto's safety and she managed to get that far so it was more than good enough for her, that metroid would have to wait. Weakly turning towards Naruto, she noticed that the red cloak was still there, it was receding back but was still there, was this form actually Naruto's and not the metroid's? She asked herself as his human form started to appear. Naruto, she said as she deactivated her badly damaged suit and reverted to her zero suit which wasn't as badly damaged as the other, she knelt down next to him before her legs gave out and the laid next to him, to Samus, it seemed he had just been sleeping the entire time, this made her heart being wrapped in a warm blanket, she raised her hand and stroked his cheek lightly before smiling weakly and falling unconscious, both blondes laid in the middle of the forest peacefully. Samus' eyes slowly fluttered open, the blonde girl groaned as she held her head, she felt sore all throughout her body, the blonde girl then noticed that her head was wrapped up in bandages and most of her upper body as well, slowly her memories started to replay the events before she had fell unconscious. Naruto? She thought to herself and looked around for any sight of him, though her surroundings were foreign to her, Samus could tell that she was back in the leaf village. Relax the village's leader said as she entered the room, revealing her presence. You are safe now Tsunade walked up to the blonde girl's bed, she had been meaning to talk to her visitor in private and now was her chance. Where's Naruto? Samus asked with nothing but great worry and anxiety. At this Tsunade couldn't help but to raise an eyebrow, the girl was highly concerned for the blonde shinobi, she stared at the girl before smiling, Tsunade remembered the report when they had found Naruto and Samus, though badly wounded, Samus was snuggling Naruto into her arms, Yamato had also mentioned that it made Sakura a bit jealous when she caught the scene, Tsunade could see she was growing attached to the blonde. He is resting Tsunade answered but it wasn't enough to calm the blonde down. I need to see him, Samus winced as she tried to move, it had seemed her body was still healing. Naruto is resting, he's been exhausted of his chakra but he'll recover in no time, Tsunade said this hoping the blonde would relax, 
Even though Tsunade knew Naruto was a speedy healer she knew that the blonde would take more time for him to wake up. You on the other hand need to regain your strength before you can go see him, the busty woman shushed any protest Samus tried to make, get your rest and you can see him tomorrow morning. Tsunade made her way towards the door but before she could even reach the door handle, she heard the blonde in bed speak. Naruto, Samus said softly, wasn't himself back then, he attacked me but it wasn't him, it was the Metroids and, and. Samus trailed off as she didn't really know how to describe what she had seen, while it was a form of an animal she couldn't actually call it that, it was more of a beast unlike she had ever seen one with terrifying power. That wasn't Naruto was it? The blonde girl stared intently at Tsunade for an answer, she just had to know. So you did see it huh? Tsunade sighed, Yamato had told her that the Kyubi's power had been leaked but had been suppressed somehow. Yamato had believed that the blonde girl was somehow able to push the Kyubi's chakra back and that those parasites were involved. Tsunade was actually impressed by the girl, not many could take on Naruto's dangerous cloak, turning towards Samus, Tsunade saw her eyes filled with worry and concern, no, that was not Naruto Tsunade said making the blonde girl close her eyes and sigh in relief. However that is a part of him at this Samus grew confused, Tsunade immediately noticed and sighed, she knew the old law and what she was about to tell the young woman was illegal but then again Tsunade was Hokage and she could bend the rules if she wanted to. What I am about to tell you is an old law made by our third Hokage, it is forbidden to speak of this. Tsunade nodded to herself as if asking herself for permission, but I think you deserve to know if we are to continue working together. Samus was anxious, a forbidden secret that involved Naruto, what is it? She dared asked. Tsunade crossed her arms, hugging her stomach, her facial expression turned serious, she stood quiet as she thought the best way to explain. Sixteen years ago, our village was attacked by a demon known as the Nine Tails or Kayubi. Samus raised an eyebrow at the mention of the word demon, she had never believed in such things but nonetheless she continued to listen to the woman's story without interrupting her. The beast was as big as a mountain and powerful enough to wipe out our land in an instant, the Kayubi destroyed our home and took many of our loved ones, with no other choice the fourth Hokage made a difficult decision. He chose to sacrifice himself in order to save our home, the Kayubi, being the strongest of the tailed beast, was sealed into a newborn child, and that child was. Naruto Samus whispered to herself as she pieced in the information herself, she couldn't believe what Naruto possessed. Yes, that is Naruto's curse, that is burden, that is what he has had to live with his entire life Tsunade nodded and looked at the blonde girl, she could already tell she wasn't taking this easy. But why him? Samus shouted trying to understand why his own people would do something so terrible, why didn't they seal it into someone else? Someone older? Why didn't his parents do something? Tsunade couldn't tell her that it was his parents who had made that decision, it wasn't in her place to say, it only made the story much more difficult to explain especially to someone outside this world. Naruto was the perfect candidate at the time and there was no one else who could have taken his place. Samus clenched her jaw, she couldn't believe it, a kind soul being forced to keep a demon inside him. Having the Kayubi inside him made him a Jinchuriki, he was to be viewed as our village's hero and our savior, however, like most Jinchuriki, Naruto lived his life being hated because he was instead seen as the Kayubi itself. Samus' eyes shut tight, she gripped the sheets of her bed, she trembled in mixed emotions of anger and sadness. Naruto did live a life without the love of his parents, he never had a family when he was young, he was an orphan and because of the Kayubi, it was difficult for him to make any friends. Samus understood the life of solitude, when she was young she had lost her parents, she never imagined that Naruto shared the same life as her, to Samus. It seemed like at first looks he was loved by everyone his personality was just so warm, she wouldn't have never guessed that he kept a demonic force deep inside him. Tsunade watched as the blonde girl was having a hard time accepting this however Tsunade smiled, she believed that this girl cared very deeply for Naruto, Tsunade didn't want to end her story there. However as Naruto grew, he didn't choose to get back at those who mistreated him, he chose to work hard to change the people's view of him, Naruto has that strange power, to reach people's hearts. Samus smiled and nodded as she let her tears stream down her cheeks. At the moment, Samus didn't care if someone saw her cry. She fully understood what Tsunade meant, she had seen it when a villager had came up to them. Back then Samus didn't understand what was going on but now she knew why that man had broken down and begged for Naruto's forgiveness, the blonde had accomplished something Samus would never dream of, Naruto had managed to change her, somehow she could already tell that he had reached inside her heart and touched it, Samus was smiling more laughing more and saying more than a few words, Samus liked it, she loved being around Naruto and meeting his friends. Tsunade smiled as she had gotten the blonde girl to calm down. Now Tsunade said catching the girl's attention, 
get some sleep and tomorrow you can pay him a visit Samus gave the Hokage a small happy smile before she nodded. Once the Hokage had left, Samus was left alone in her bed, she stared out the window and looked at the village, she had heard that the place was in terrible condition after the recent attack but looking at the progress the village was already shaping up to looking rather beautiful, once her eyes started to feel heavy, she fell asleep moments later, dreaming about the whiskered blonde. Samus looked around her surroundings, she was just outside the leaf's gate, she didn't know what she was doing there or how she had gotten there in the first place, she was the caught by surprise when Naruto landed in front of her with a look of excitement. Hey Samus! Look what I can do, Naruto shouted with a toothy grin, he formed a cross with his fingers for his signature move before shouting. Power suit no jutsu! Samus sweat dropped and didn't expect much to happen but before she could say anything. Small white clouds puffed and then saw Naruto was completely hidden, her eyes widened in disbelief as the clouds cleared, she couldn't believe the sight before her eyes, there stood her power suit right in front of her, it had the same design except it was different colored, his suit's primary color was blue instead of orange, along with the same red color for the helmet his arm cannon was also green. Na na Naruto, she stammered as her jaw hung low, how? When? Naruto just grinned behind his visor, come on, Samus, don't Shaw remember our bet? Bet? What bet? She never once remembered such a thing happening. If I woke up before you then I'd get to use your suit and you have to be wearing that. The blonde's grin grew bigger before he pointed at the woman. Samus followed and saw that she was wearing his clothes but instead of pants they were short shorts and instead of a long sleeve jacket Samus wore a sleeves jacket with the zipper down revealing that she wore nothing but mesh under. Samus quickly covered her chest and blushed and then gave the blonde a glare. Naruto laughed before deactivating his power suit, her glare was rather cute. As she tried to look serious she only made herself look adorable with that blush spread across her face. Come on. It doesn't look too bad Samus blushed even more when he lift her chin gently and locked his eyes with hers, Samus couldn't help but melt into his stare, she felt like putty. I guess it wouldn't have been too bad if you woke up before me, Naruto said which caught Samus attention, slightly breaking from his hypnotic stare. Why? What do I win if I woke up first? She asked as her eyes stared half-lidded. Naruto smiled. Wake up and find out he then leaned into her lips, Samus lips almost touched Naruto's, before she was blinded by a bright light. Samus eyes popped open, she blushed as she was just about to kiss Naruto, sure it was a dream but damn it, Samus was upset she didn't get to kiss him, she blushed and was glad no one was around to see her embarrassing predicament. Have a nice dream? She was wrong, there stood Tsunade once again and with a teasing smile, Samus frowned and looked away but her blush did not leave, shaking her head she said, no, just slept really well. Oh, but you sure were mumbling Naruto's name a lot, you didn't have any dirty dreams did you? Tsunade couldn't help but grin as the blonde girl all but turned farther away from her trying to hide her glowing blush, she then laughed and waved it off. Forgive me, it just not many foreigners take interest in Naruto such as yourself. Samus just nodded still trying to keep her cool but was failing miserably. Now, Suande started as she got serious I've come to tell you something I left out yesterday. Tsunade cleared her throat before beginning. There is a reason why our village is in critical condition and as to why we are heading to war. Returning to her calm state, Samus nodded and listened to the blonde woman. This war is going to be about protecting the last remaining Jinchuriki Tsunade then crossed her arms under her bust and continued, along with another container, Naruto is one of the last ones out of the nine, if he falls into the enemy hands then our world will be doomed. Samus eyes widen, if this war was about Naruto then his life would be in grave danger, she couldn't believe that there was a war over someone such as Naruto, Samus knew that they weren't after him specifically but what's inside him, the seriousness of this war worried her greatly, why couldn't the blonde have a normal life already, he had been through enough. I was careless to send Naruto out on a mission by himself and with a stranger we had just met no less. Samus then realized this is why she was being suspected back then, they were afraid for Naruto's safety, it would totally justify their actions from before. Once Naruto is fully recovered, we will move him out to a secure location where he will be guarded so he will not fall into the enemy's hand, we will have another person in his place and. No, Samus interrupted, I can't work with anyone else, only Naruto can help me with this mission. Tsunade only shook her head, I am sorry but it is too much of a risk to let Naruto out, I have already let it happen and almost lost him, I cannot let that happen again. Samus however did not want to work with anyone else, it wasn't because she couldn't get along with anyone else but because she wanted to keep being with the blonde. I can protect him for you, Samus said hoping it would change her mind but Tsunade did not budge, I am sorry but I doubt even you can protect him from this enemy, he is just too powerful. Samus rapidly shook her head, no, I mean I can take him with me, in my ship. 
At this Tsunade was curious as to what she meant, Samus saw her confused state and continued. I can take him off this planet for a short time and hide him perfectly. Tsunade thought about it, while it would be good to have Naruto completely out of Madara's reach it still sounded too dangerous. I am sorry but we cannot ask you to do that for us, I appreciate it but I will decline your offer. Listen I appreciate wanting to help but this isn't your war, you don't have to involve yourself with our problems. Tsunade gave Samus a small smile, now, get dressed and you can go see Naruto. Samus wanted to say something, anything she could do to help them protect the blonde but she didn't know what, she couldn't just kidnap him, or force them to agree with her, at this moment she needed to see Naruto, hopefully he wouldn't be too banged up. Oh by the way, please do not inform Naruto of our plans, if he finds out that we are keeping him away from the battlefield to protect him then hell just run out to the enemy's hands. Samus nodded and Tsunade smiled at her once more, the blonde woman then noticed something, Tsunade couldn't tell what it was but something seemed different, like something had changed from the girl's features. Were her eyes always this blue? Tsunade shook her head, she had been under a lot of stress so she thought nothing more of it, with nothing else left to say the blonde Hokage took her leave. Samus was eager to see Naruto, she needed to get dressed quickly, she looked at her hospital gown and noticed that she wasn't wearing her zero suit, she wondered how the hell did they manage to remove it. Samus sat in his bed as Naruto laid on the bed, he was still unconscious and healing, Samus smiled at the his peaceful form, she couldn't help it, just seeing him made her happy, she was glad he hadn't fallen to those parasites clutches, Samus admired him, she admired his strength, his ability to keep going and not give in even when everything seemed lost. Naruto, I Samus stopped herself, she remembered the incident when they were on her ship, she had yelled at him when Naruto was only curious about her, Samus stared at her lap while she was deep in thought. I am sorry she said, it's just, Samus bit her lip when she had difficulty coming up with an apology, even though the blonde couldn't hear her, Samus still had trouble speaking from her heart. You wouldn't keep your big nose out of my stuff, Samus wanted to palm her face, even she thought that was a lame excuse for an apology, her cheeks were burning, she frowned as if the sleeping blonde was teasing her, Samus then pouted angrily, looking away from Naruto, Samus found it hard to apologize, she just wasn't good with this kind of stuff. I am sorry, she said in a small whisper, glancing towards Naruto's sleeping form she said it again, I am sorry I yelled at you. Once she was able to fully look at Naruto, Samus smiled to herself, she was proud of herself for this small achievement even it were a bit silly, Naruto truly did bring out the very best in people, she frowned when she noticed Naruto smiling, her eye twitched, he must be enjoying this even though he's asleep however, she waved it off and smiled once more, Samus saw underneath that smile and found that he was genuinely happy for her. Thank you, Naruto the blonde whispered, her hand approached his before she placed it on top of his, she felt his warmth comforting, something she rarely experienced. A week had passed and Samus had gotten quite comfortable in the leaf. Even at the beginning of a war, though Naruto had yet to wake up. Samus still enjoyed her time, the village was friendly. She occasionally wanted to glare at some of the villagers but didn't want to come off as a rude guest. Samus visited Naruto daily while she herself was still healing. When she was hungry Samus made a bad habit to go to Ichiraku's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, though Samus mostly went to talk to Ayame, the two had gotten closer and became good friends, Ayame was surprised when Samus had finally let her know that she was from outer space and not from this world, Ayame didn't treat her any different however, she did ask about other planets just like Naruto did, why was that such a popular question? Good luck Ayame said, she grinned and gave her a thumbs up as the blonde girl left the ramen stand. Samus had been notified, by the purple haired masked woman the same Enbu that had been keeping an eye on her, that Naruto had woken up a few hours ago, Samus was happy, excited, relieved and most of all, nervous, making her way to the hospital she hoped the blonde was feeling better. What are you? Those words echoed in Naruto's head, his eyes shuddered open and stared at the ceiling, his eyes turned to his body and saw that it was wrapped in bandages covering his wounds, he couldn't stop thinking about it, thinking back how he had released his other side, Naruto had been saved by the fourth Hokage back then but this time his father couldn't help him, the Metroids, those parasites brought it out of him, he couldn't fight it. They had sucked his chakra completely rendering him hopeless, Naruto's eyes continued bore holes at the ceiling, the hospital always brought bad memories and now he was filled with guilt. Samus he thought as the memories started flowing back to him. He had attacked her, he didn't remember anything when he was under the Kyubi's cloak but he did remember just after the Metroids had attached themselves to him. They were able to bring out the demonic chakra after depleting his and were able to gain control of his body, the words Samus said when she saw him take that form haunted him, she was disgusted by him, she was probably afraid to even be around him now after all he was the one who had hurt her, 
It may have been because he was under the influence of those parasites but he felt responsible for not controlling it. Naruto wanted to see her, to see if she was okay but he felt the overwhelming guilt to be too much. He would just lay in bed, shifting his head to the side he caught sight the sunflower as it eclipsed the sun's light, he wondered who had left a sunflower for him, it wasn't something he usually saw on his bedside, he slowly sat up and reached out for it, Naruto winced in pain, his arm was heavily wounded that it hard to move it, with his other arm he picked up the pot with the sunflower, his eyes softened and a small smile formed. Do you like it? Samus said, she stood in the doorway, Naruto was surprised to see the blonde girl but was even more surprised to see her in a light blue dress, it suited her, the color fit her and it made her look gorgeous, his eyes then made their way back to the flower in his hands, he slowly nodded as he stared at the yellow petals. Thank you he said, Naruto avoided her gaze as she slowly walked inside, Samus was having trouble speaking, she wanted to talk to him about so many things and how sorry she was for the way she acted back then but she couldn't find the right way to say it, damn it, she had practiced. And Naruto she whispered but the blonde didn't catch it, she blushed as she buried her face in her bangs. I am sorry, it's my fault. They both stared at each other, they both felt like they were to blame. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her, she was apologizing when it was his fault for causing her any harm. Samus, what are you saying? I am the one who should be sorry. You, you saw what I did. He trailed off as the words Samus had once said back then came back haunting him once more. I am not like anyone else, I have had this burden since I was born, I didn't want you to find out like this. I was gonna tell you but I I. Naruto. Samus yelled effectively shutting him up, she wanted him to stop apologizing, seeing him like this made her sad, it's not your fault she said as her eyes met his with nothing but sincere kindness. Tsunade told me all about it she saw his eyes widen when said this, she could see the look of worry in his eyes, Samus remembered what the busty blonde woman had told her. Naruto lived a life without the love of his parents, he never had a family when he was young. Because of the Kayubi, it was difficult for him to make any friends. When I was young, I lost my parents too Naruto's eyes widen, Samus sat at the edge of his bed and continued, it was hard but eventually I found someone I could call a father, though he was always very strict and very bossy, he always thought about the best interest in me Samus eyes relaxed as she stared at the floor, her memories replayed in her head as she told Naruto. However, I never saw it that way till the very end Naruto daringly asked what happened and saw Samus give a small smile. That day he gave up his own life so I could live on, I had lost someone very precious to me Naruto looked away, he didn't know what to say. I am sorry Samus shook her head as she tried to get him to look at her, Naruto, I don't want you to think that I will abandon you after what happened, I wouldn't want you to Samus grabbed his hand with hers, his eyes then met hers, he saw her eyes held strong feelings, he noticed the change I am your friend no matter what, I am sorry if I never made it clear. Naruto, comforted by her words, felt happy that she finally thought of him as a friend, he closed his eyes and smiled brightly at Bounty Hunter Princess, thank you Samus Chan. Samus cheeks reddened at the nickname, she wanted to say something about the name but Samus actually liked it and decided it was fine for the moment, she then saw the plant that Naruto had cradled in his hand, she thought back how she came to choose that particular flower. Samus had come across a flower shop, one that the Hokage had personally pointed out herself, Samus stood in front of the small shop before pulling the handle on the door and entering the shop, upon entering Samus heard a bell jingle as the door opened and closed, she then heard a girl's voice call out. Welcome to Yamanaka flower shop, it'll be there in just a minute. The girl yelled from the back room, Samus slowly nodded to herself and then began to look around. She saw many different kinds of flowers some that were familiar and some that were new to her, Samus wanted to pick out the right flower to give Naruto while he was recovering, he had yet to wake up and Samus wanted something nice for him when he woke up, the only thing is Samus didn't know what kind of flower to pick, there were so many to choose from, she examined a light blue flower that resembled the color of her suit and considered it for a second. Hello there, how may I help you today? Samus turned towards the blonde girl who seemed to work the place, the girl in purple smiled warmly at her, oh sorry, my name is Ino Yamanaka she proceeded towards the other blonde and examined her, I am guessing you are not from around here? Samus nodded, I am looking to buy a flower for a friend of mine. Ino smiled and gestured her arm towards her beautiful collection of flowers, well look no further, Yamanaka flower shop is definitely the best place to get all your needs for that special flower. Tell me, what kind of flower are you looking for? Anything in mind? Samus thought about it, she had no idea what kind of flower would Naruto like or if he even liked flowers to begin with. Samus sighed and sweat dropped at the blonde girl. Actually I really don't know what kind he would like Samus wasn't good at picking out gifts for people, she had trouble doing things like these. Oh so it's a he, huh? Is he someone you have a crush on but don't know the right words to say to him? 
The sly smile on the blonde's lips told Samus that she was enjoying her time teasing her. Samus closed her eyes and tried pushing the heat away from her face, she cleared her throat and said, No, he is just a friend of mine who got injured in battle. The smile Eno had disappeared, Oh I am so sorry I didn't know. Samus only shook her head and told her it was fine, Eno however startled Samus when she turned to her and grabbed her by the shoulders, Wait, you don't mean Naruto Uzumaki right? Samus eyed the girl, Yes, how did you know? Eno gave sympathetic smile as she knew all about the blonde returning from a mission badly wounded, she had visited him one time when she had heard the news, Eno also heard, from Sakura that is, that he had gone with a blonde woman in a blue suit, once she came here asking for a flower for a friend she put two and two together and well you get the rest. Everybody knows that clumsy dummy, but don't worry Naruto will make a speedy recovery soon. Samus smiled at the blonde girl before nodding, it was good to hear that he had people that cared about him. Now if you want your flower to stand out and get him to notice you, then you're gonna need one that comes from the heart Eno said as she pulled the girl to a garden of pots of flowers of all sorts. I don't want him to notice me, I just want a simple flower Samus stuttered which only made Eno smirk. So is that what you want? A simple flower? Eno sighed and her eyes showed that they had lost interest, I guess Naruto isn't that special, he never has been to begin with actually, he really is loud and obnoxious, glad I am not in Sakura's shoes. Samus stopped in her tracks as the blonde girl insulted the whiskered blonde, Eno turned to the girl and noticed she didn't seem too happy, she seemed ticked, pissed even. He may be annoying to you but to me he is a kind person who not only works hard to make others happy but to protect the people he loves, I think you take him for granted. Samus gave Eno a cold glare, you should hold on to him because he is definitely one of a kind. Eno stared at the cold stare Samus was giving her before she smirked once more. So he is special, Eno grinned as she got the blonde girl to confess her feelings out, it may have been mean but how else was Eno going to get her to talk? Samus glare dropped when the girl in front of her smiled, she mentally slapped herself for spitting out her private thoughts. Yo you tricked me, she stammered out which only made Eno's smile grow, Eno then casually waved her hand. Don't worry about it she started with a grin, I won't tell anyone, it'll be our little secret Eno sealed her lips with her fingers as if there were zipper. Now about that special flower, many minutes later, after viewing every flower the shop had to offer Samus made her decision, the flower came from the heart, the one that told her feelings was. Are you sure you want to get this one? I mean there's plenty of others that are far more better than this one Eno said as she eyed the plant, she wasn't kidding when she said a simple flower. No I am sure this is the right one Samus smiled as she hugged the potted plant, a sunflower. Okay, Eno said a bit confused at her choice but if it made the blonde girl happy with her choice then Eno would go along with it. How much do I owe you? Samus asked well let's see, helping you out choose, add the cost of keeping me busy not to mention that the flower is our last one. Eno calculated the total in her head as she had her eyes closed. The total comes to, one date with Naruto Uzumaki Eno said before grinning at her last words, with you of course. Wh what? Samus stammered out, her eyes wide open as a scarlet blush was spread across her cheeks, this made Eno's sly grin even bigger. You heard me, once Naruto wakes up, you go on and ask him on a date. I refuse. Samus all but yelled, I have money to pay for it, even if she wasn't a shinobi of this village. Samus had been paid for completing her mission even though it wasn't a complete success. Eno pushed her hands in front of her while shaking her head, your money is no good here, now, the blonde girl dragged, pushed Samus to the door. You go and get a pretty dress and wait for him to wake up. With that being said Eno slammed the door closed leaving Samus lost in the middle of the street. A pretty dress? She thought to herself before going out to look for a store that would sell dresses, her expression remained cool and calm except that her cheeks were slightly pink. Samus? Naruto called out to her as he flicked his fingers in front of her, the girl had been staring blankly at him for a while now, Samus shook her head lightly and looked away. I win Samus said almost whispering which confused Naruto, Samus looked at him in the eyes with a determination in her eyes. I woke up first so I win, being back as the Hokage. Tsunade didn't imagine her job being any less tedious after wearing herself out during Pain's invasion. She cursed at the amount of paperwork that had stacked up when she had awoken. Oh how right the blonde woman was, Tsunade carefully read the papers Shizun had presented to her. These were especially of an urgent matter, she had read it over and over just to understand clearly. She found it strange as she kept on racing her eye over every piece of information. Tsunade then eyed over to Shizun where she stood with a bit of an uncertain expression. It seemed that even Shizun was puzzled by this, the blonde woman looked back to the papers in hand before giving a long exhausted sigh. 
It was late and she didn't expect any more news coming to her desk at this time but then again she was the Hokage so it was her duty, no her right to know these things first, still, Tsunade wished it didn't involve the blonde, she was relieved that nothing was wrong with Naruto's health, that certainly took a load off her shoulders but what was still bugging her was the other blonde's condition. Somehow, Tsunade mumbled and flipped the pages of papers giving each a quick scan, her chakra signatures are mixed with Naruto's. I believe that when she activates her power, she is able to use her own chakra unknowingly but how she managed to share the same signature as Naruto is a mystery to me. I believe her encounter with the Kyubi might be the cause of it but I would have expected to see her chakra mixed with the Kyubi not Naruto's, Shizune said, she had been the one who treated Samus wounds when the two blondes had returned from their mission, Shizune couldn't understand how parasites managed to bring the Kyubi out of Naruto and how Samus was able to absorb his chakra, when Shizune had done a quick scan of the girl's body and her chakra system, she found traces of Naruto's chakra. Removing her suit was a bit difficult at first but somehow it had disappeared like it had mind of its own when Shizune had placed a hospital gown on top of it. Shizune liked the blonde bounty hunter, she remembered when Samus was unconscious the blonde girl would be mumbling her sleep, mostly about food, she would drool and snore a bit, Shizune thought it was a hilarious but acute scene coming from a serious and stern woman like Samus, eventually Shizune didn't discover how her chakra system was looming with Naruto's. Tsunade sighed and rested her chin on the palm of her hand, just when she thought they were out of the woods they get this news, Tsunade smiled at the irony, it seemed that the blonde was getting attached to the blonde by literally taking Naruto's chakra into her system. Samus Aran, interesting Tsunade looked at the small clock at her desk. Since her old office had been destroyed she had lost her windows to see outside and as well as her old clock. It was already past midnight and she was certain that the blonde girl was sound asleep, she would have to put her plan on hold till the sun was up, for now it was time for Shizune and herself to get some much needed rest. After all they still had a war on their hands, the fourth shinobi war, Tsunade thought to herself before giving a tiresome sigh, you've kept me busy, she said before giving a smile, Naruto. The next day Samus cursed herself for being too weak. All she had to do was ask Naruto if he wanted to go on a date simple. Nothing too hard, heck, she could have said she wanted to hang out but no. Samus had instead asked Naruto to train, she couldn't do it because it wasn't in her nature to do these kinds of things. Samus didn't know anything about liking someone, she didn't know anything about love, she frowned at the memory, although the female blonde wanted to know how to utilize chakra Samus wished she could spend her time with Naruto some more without any threat to their lives, then again it would be just the two of them training so maybe after they could go out and grab a bite to eat, I still have to repay that girl Samus referring to Ino and the debt she owed to the flower girl. Sensing a threat, Samus quickly drew her sidearm on instinct and aimed it at the direction behind her where the trees stood. Show yourself Samus shouted with her usual impassive expression, it took a few seconds before the figure calmly stepped out of the shadows, Samus raised a brow, it was the purple headed woman that hid her face behind a mask, so she had been following them even now, Samus could understand after all that's happened, they wanted to protect Naruto from the enemy, she lowered her weapon before holstering back to her side but didn't lower her guard. I may be stuck babysitting you but if I see you endangering him again, I won't hesitate to putting an end to your partnership her words contained nothing but spite, Samus was surprised that the masked woman had actually said more than a few words and not only that but also threatened her, she narrowed her eyes at the suspicious woman, what was her deal? Did she have a grudge against her? And was she close to Naruto? No, he hadn't recognized her before but then again she was wearing a mask, Samus stepped forward as a sign that she wasn't afraid of her threats and wasn't backing down but that didn't mean she was picking a fight. I do not intend to put Naruto's life in danger nor do I wish for it to happen, rest assured I have no bad intentions. The purple headed woman stood quiet, Samus could feel her staring at her as if she was looking for any deceit but Samus stood her ground, she had nothing to hide. Well see and with that said the masked woman vanished from Samus sight, she sighed, things were getting really complicated around that blonde, Samus wondered just how much more harder things were now that she knew his secret, but she knew that it was all worth it, every struggle they had been through didn't scare her from being with Naruto. Speaking of the Naruto, the blonde had yet to arrive, even though he had been released from the medical care. Naruto was in no condition to physically strain himself maybe it would have been better to come together rather than meet up, Naruto wasn't allowed to leave the village so they had picked a place where they could be alone, Naruto had chosen the Hokage mountain specifically so he could teach her about using chakra, Samus had been waiting for half an hour now only because she had arrived earlier than the actual time they were supposed to meet up. Oi! Samus! Speak of the devil! Naruto ran up to the blonde but with both his arms in a cast that were under a sling they gave him trouble to actually run normally. Once Naruto arrived he panted as he was out of breath, trying to run uphill while both your arms were practically constricted in bandages was rather difficult. Naruto, you should nt be pushing yourself too hard, 
She held him by the shoulders giving him a bit of support. Samus was unaware how comfortable she had gotten with him that touching him wasn't a problem for her now or at least it wasn't at the moment. I should NT have asked you to train me while you're still recovering. Naruto shook his head and gave her a goofy smile. Nonsense Samus, this is nothing. I can use my arms it's just these cast are annoying. Nechan told me that I had to wear them so I wouldn't hurt myself Samus sighed and then smiled. It was nice to see him wake when he was hospitalized. Samus found the village a bit gloomy without his presence, she was glad he was up and about just as before. Now why don't we get started? Naruto said, sure he couldn't physically train but that didn't mean he couldn't show Samus what she needed to do, he just wished he could at least form a clone to help them out. After a while Naruto got comfortable and was able to explain his basic knowledge of chakra to Samus. The female blonde was quick to understand from Naruto's words, so both spiritual and physical energy huh? She said to herself, Naruto had also given her some examples of chakra and how to control it. Samus never realized it but she was able to use some of her untamed chakra when she would activate her special power. If she was able to learn more about it then maybe Samus could learn a few new tricks just like Naruto's ninjutsu. She was curious about one specifically, it was one of Naruto's signature jutsu. Hey Naruto, Samus called out to him as he was sitting on the grassy plains. Yeah? You having a problem with something? Samus shook her head before she asked. It's about one of your techniques I have seen you use. Naruto raised an eyebrow and leaned a bit closer, which one? Well I am just curious how you are able to make multiple copies of yourself. You mean shadow clones? Naruto said, receiving a nod from the blonde, Naruto thought about it and wondered why Samus would want to know about that, maybe she wanted to clone herself as well? More Samus wasn't a bad idea, in Naruto's fantasies he could be surrounded by different types of Samus. There'd be a shy and timid Samus who would only find comfort in Naruto's arms or maybe a kinky one that would tease him and whisper naughty things into his ear, or... Crap, what the hell is wrong with me? As Naruto started to glow red, Samus tilted her head at the blonde and wondered why he had gone all quiet all of a sudden. Is there something wrong Naruto? You're red, do you have a fever? Samus pressed her forehead against his to take his temperature only to increase his heat level. Samus was oblivious to Naruto's nervous state. She was too busy staring at the blue orbs in front of her. The spiky-haired blonde looked to the side. He blushed madly as he could feel Samus' close presence. He didn't know why there was loud beating or why it had gotten hot all of a sudden. What was this feeling he was going through? With caution, Naruto slowly draped his eyesight to her feet then they went up to her legs. They continued going up and made a brief stop on her chest. Naruto saw how she was breathing heavily. Naruto blushed even more before his eyes finally landed on Samus' blue eyes. Samus was captivated by his cerulean colored eyes, she backed up a little so her forehead wasn't touching his no more and continued to admire his blue orbs. She then glanced at his lips, Samus wondered how they would feel pressed up against hers, Samus had dreamed countless times where she was about to kiss him while he was hospitalized but every time she was about to kiss him, her eyes would open in the middle of the night interrupting the best part, she cursed before giving a girly squeal that was in an uncharacteristic manner of her, I want to kiss him, Samus told herself as she slowly leaned in. Naruto's eyes widened as he didn't back off, he saw as Samus slowly closed her eyes and started to lean in closer to him, Naruto didn't know why but he didn't stop her, in fact the blonde leaned in as well to meet her halfway, for some reason Naruto's heart was telling him to kiss her and he didn't deny it, both blondes were inches away from each other's lips, it wasn't until a small rock that landed between them that stopped their actions, what the? Naruto questioned as he and Samus stared at the rock between them, Samus cursed the bad timing as she screamed loudly in her head about another missed opportunity. Yugo had watched as the two blondes were enjoying their time together but she kept her eyes specifically at the female blonde. She didn't trust her yet, women like her only got people around them killed and she wasn't about to let Naruto die. It was her mission and one she wasn't going to fail. When she watched on as the two blondes got comfortably close to each other. Yugo was on the edge of her seat or in her case the tree branch she was standing on top of, she saw as the blonde girl was leaning to kiss Naruto, she guessed that Naruto would deny her the kiss but boy. Was she wrong when Naruto also went for her lips? Yugo was not going to have any of that. Quickly looking around Yugo jumped down and picked up a small rock. She looked as the blondes were about to lock lips and then aimed at their direction before launching it in the air. She smirked behind her mask as she managed to stop the kiss from happening. I am sorry Naruto but I can't allow that she said to herself. Yugo's smirk grew when she got a look at the blonde girl's face. The purple headed Enbu then took notice of the flying messenger bird in the sky. The Hokage was calling for her. Yugo cursed. She didn't want to leave Samus alone with the blonde shinobi but duty called and Yugo couldn't just ignore the Hokage after all she was the one who let her watch over them. With no other choice left, Yugo took one last look at the two blondes before making her way to the Hokage's chambers. After their training session was done within their awkward moment where they almost kissed, 
The blonde duo decided to grab a bite to eat and what better place to eat than Ichiraku's? Naruto and Samus both entered the small ramen stand and were both greeted by a smiling Ayame. Naruto, your arms? Ayame exclaimed in an unconvincing tone. She knew already about the blonde's condition as Samus had passed the information to her. However are you going to eat now? She then turned to Samus with a smirk that was up to no good. Samus' eyes widened when she realized what she was up to. The blonde girl blushed and turned slightly in her seat to get a glance at the blonde next to her. Naruto was oblivious to whatever Yame was planning, he was too occupied with his current dilemma. How the hell am I going to eat? He asked himself, during his time at the hospital he had the nurse feed him because Shizun didn't want him to strain his arms but now, well at least he could put his clothes on so hell have to try his best. Here we are Ayame said as she placed the usual orders for Naruto and Samus, Naruto noticed the special order Ayame had given Samus, he hadn't even seen the blonde girl order. Wait Nei chan how did you know what Samus wanted? Ayame smiled before replying, because while you were out, Samus started coming here often she turned to Samus and saw that she was hiding her face from Naruto, Ayame thought it was cute and also an opportunity, Samus and I have become very good friends. Naruto raised both brows in surprise. He didn't expect Samus and Ayame becoming good friends, he turned to Samus and saw her give him a nod, confirming Ayame's words, wow, that's awesome, who else have you friended? Naruto was excited that he had forgotten about his food. I've met your friend Ino Yamanaka, she is more or less, helpful, it was the best Samus could describe, even if Ino had tricked Samus, she still thought the flower girl meant well. Aya oh yeah, Ino is pretty nice sometimes, Naruto grinned at Samus as Ayame watched them from behind the counter. She then decided to also help Samus in a manner that did get her a glare from the said blonde girl. Now now you guys, your food is going to get cold, Naruto looked at his bowl and fidgeted in his seat trying to loosen his eyes from the cast, Samus, why don't you feed Naruto? Naruto froze before letting out a nervous chuckle, and no there's no need for that mmph was all he could say as suddenly food was suddenly shoved in his mouth, he turned to Samus who held her chopsticks with the next helping of noodles. Say on she said with a stoic face, Naruto looked at her carefully before doing so, Aeon he opened his mouth and ate the serving before blushing, why was Samus feeding him all of a sudden? This was what couples do. Inside Samus' head, the poor girl was nervous, she didn't know why she went with the idea, with her chopsticks Samus went for the next serving of noodles except this time she noticed that they were steaming hot, the blonde bounty hunter then did something that even she didn't expect from herself, with her lips pressed closely together she leaned in and blew on the noodles. Naruto's heart was beating quick. He couldn't believe how attractive Samus looked the moment she blew into the ramen noodles. Why, why am I feeling this way? He asked himself in a dazed, it was the second time today he was feeling strange, he was so confused about his current situation that he didn't realize Samus was waiting for him to open up. This is just too much fun, Ayame thought to herself as she had her arms propped up on the table and her hands cupping her face while watching the two blondes like it was one of her father's romance soap operas, Ayame had listened to Samus throughout the past week about how worried she was for the blonde. She knew that Samus had fallen for him even if she didn't know it herself. Tsunade stood at the edge of her desk, she was quiet while she took the time to think. Yugo quietly knelt at the center of the Hokage's room while she awaited for her orders. Tsunade then looked at the purple headed Anbu, she was going to give her a new mission, about the blonde woman. Give me your thoughts about her. Tsunade could tell that Yugo was confused when she titled her head, for Yugo it was an unexpected question indeed, but nevertheless she answered, I find her careless and arrogant. Tsunade smiled at the Kunoichi's response, is that so? In way Samus and Yugao were alike, so it was kind of funny to the busty blonde well I guess you'll get to know more about her Tsunade handed her a folder that contained all the information about Samus, the Metroids and everything Tsunade knew so far, your next mission is to accompany Samus Aran in the search for a dangerous parasite. Metroid? Yugao read the different files and questioned. Yes that is what she calls them, tomorrow your mission begins, please get some rest, you more than deserve it. Wait. What about Uzumaki, Naruto? Yugo asked as she closed the file and stood up. Naruto will not be aware of any of this so it'll be a perfect opportunity to move him to our secured location, Yugo nodded, if this was to protect the blonde then she would be more than willing to accept this mission, even if I have to work with her, I will do this to protect Naruto no matter what. Yugo Azuki always pictured her death, she always wondered how it would feel like, if it would be cold and a painful or if she'd feel nothing at all and see darkness with a bright light at the end. It was how many thought the afterlife was like after you died but Yugo didn't witness any of that. Instead the purple headed woman was left in a forest, surrounded by trees and a small river bank, the place was pitch black with only the moon illuminating light for the woman. Was this heaven or hell? Yugo looked around, she didn't understand, one minute she was protecting the Hokage and the next she wakes up here. 
It has been quite some time. Her eyes immediately widened when she recognized the voice, she was frozen in place, Yugo couldn't find the strength to turn, ha Hayate, she managed to call out before slowly turning towards the person. Yugo couldn't believe it, standing at the other side of the river was her late lover. Hayate Gekko, the one she had lost a few years ago when the village had been attacked back then, Hayate stood in his normal Junin uniform, he looked the same as she remembered him except he no longer had those bags under his eyes and his cough was gone. Yugo was on the verge of tears. She ran towards him but only to be stopped by the harsh water rapids as they somehow had a mind of its own, she was so close, the only thing that stood in her way was a damn river. Hayate made no attempt to cross over, he merely smiled at the woman he loved before closing his eyes and giving a content sigh, he was happy to see Yugo again, he really was but he felt as if he had left her alone, he felt guilty. Forgive me, Yugo, I wasn't strong enough Yugo looked away from his saddened expression. She had gotten stronger after mourning Hayate's. She had decided to follow his example and yet, Yugo perished by the hands of an Akatsuki, she never did introduce herself to him, she only watched from the shadows as he worked hard to save his friend and become Hokage. Yugo had always visited Hayate's grave as she talked about the one she admired, the one who saved her from falling into the wrong path. I tried so hard not to give in after your death Yugo clenched her fist by her sides and trembled. I wanted to make them pay for your death. Even when we had come to an alliance I wanted revenge but in the end I couldn't. So I tried to end it all. Yugo held her tone carefully as her voice started to break, just to be with you again, just so I wouldn't feel this heart aching pain anymore Yugo pressed her fingers on her chest, pointing to her heart. I am sorry Hayate began as his eyes strayed away from Yugo's, I wasn't there for you, if I was, then maybe you would still be alive. Yugo brushed her arm over her eyes before she shook her head, Hayate's eyes glanced at her and they caught the surprising smile on Yugo's lips, one that he had only seen when they were together. It wasn't your fault Hayate. There was someone who helped me pull myself back together, he helped me make the right choice and follow a path I was proud to take. Yugo remembered all the struggles and hardships she went through alone but no matter what, she always thought about Naruto Uzumaki, the boy who she saved her from herself. Hayate closed his eyes and smiled, he was glad that Yugo was able to smile even after living a life all alone, no, she wasn't alone, she had someone there for her, someone that made her smile like he once did. When a sudden bright light engulfed Yugo, Hayate smiled as she was surprised at the radiant warm light around her body, I guess you still have something else back there. Wa wait. Yugo called out, she was ready to accept her fate, why was she being called back to the world of the living, she jumped into the water and tried to swim her way towards Hayate but it wouldn't allow her even if she was just step away from him. It'll be waiting for you so don't rush into anything unless you are sure it's worth it Hayate gave her a small grin as he reached out his hand for her. Yugo was an inch away from his hand before she was pulled back into the moon and into the world of the living. Yugo woke up in the middle of the night, her eyes glanced towards the window as she stared at the full moon. It was just like in her dream, no it wasn't a dream, it was a memory, the day she was brought back to life. Yugo rose from her bed, that day when she had been brought back to life was something she was never going to forget. Yugo had met her deceased lover, even if for a little bit she was happy she got to see him once more, but it was not only that but the day Naruto was the village hero. She had heard the story from others, how he had defeated the powerful Akatsuki member known as Pain and how Naruto was able to change his beliefs through words and not violence which ended up bringing all the casualties back to life including hers. Naruto, you're a special brat you know that? Yugo said to herself with a smile, she then turned to the moon before her eyes turned fierce, her mission was only a few hours away and Yugo was already getting ready for it, even if Naruto didn't know who she was, Yugo would make sure she'd protect him from any danger, that included the blonde woman. Picking up Hayate's old katana, she began to put her gear on, this mission will give me a little bit of info on her until then I can't trust her. Samus woke up to a rude awakening, while she didn't like to sleep in as much, she actually did want to catch a few more hours before getting up, when she opened the door she took note that the sun wasn't even up yet, usually she woke around this hour why was she so tired? Samus was too caught up with her thoughts that she hadn't noticed Shizun standing right in front of her, UHHM, Samus San, Shizun said carefully as she waved her hand in front of the blonde girl which snapped her out of her daze. Sorry Samus said as she shook her sleep away, is there something I can help you with? Like why you are waking me up at this hour the blonde girl though rudely but quickly scolded herself. Well it is an urgent matter Lady Tsunade would like to have with you Shizun said. Can this not wait till later? Samus asked only for Shizun to shake her head, no, the Hokage wishes to discuss about the parasite you have been looking for, she says she has found a trail at this Samus woke up. It was the last Metroid that had escaped her, she had been analyzing its traits the past couple of days and needed to find it quickly before it caused any more trouble. I understand, I will be there as soon as I can with a nod from the medic Nin, 
Samus turned to her room and closed the door before she was to get ready. A few minutes later and Samus was in Tsunade's office, she wondered when Naruto would get here and also questioned why the masked woman was here, as her eyes narrowed and glanced at the purple-headed woman, Samus tried to figure out what she was up to, was she going to brief the Hokage on what Naruto and her had been doing? If she was then there was nothing bad, Samus was sure, she had been a good friend. In fact, yesterday she had almost kissed him, had it not been for the inconvenient rock breaking them apart she would have definitely kissed him. Oh no! She shouted in her head as she started to blush, did she see us? Samus asked herself, her face started to feel hot, she didn't know what to think, first the Hokage, then the flower girl and Ayame too Samus turned to her feet as she cooled down, she could just picture a big toothy grin behind that mask as the woman was ready to tease her as well. When the door behind them opened, Yugo turned to Samus only for her to quickly avoid her stare, the purple-headed woman raised an eyebrow behind her mask. Ah good, you're both here Tsunade said as she and Shizune entered the office before she made her way towards her desk and sat down, now we can get started. Samus looked behind her at the door to see if anyone else was coming through, specifically Naruto, when she didn't see anyone else Samus turned to Tsunade, will we not be waiting for Naruto to be joining us as well? No, I am afraid Naruto will not be joining us Samus narrowed her eyes carefully and nodded, she was sure there was something going on. Your new partner, Tsunade motioned to the masked woman, Yugo Azuki. Samus frowned and turned to Tsunade, she had been very clear back then that she was not going to take a mission with another person especially this woman, I have said before that I would only work with Naruto as my partner. Tsunade smiled, she knew Samus wasn't going to agree working with someone else, it was kinda cute to the blonde woman. She could see Samus acting like a little girl who refused to work with others simply because it wasn't the person they liked. Tsunade nodded as she crossed her arms over her chest and closed her eyes, I see she said. Let me ask the both of you something, do you wish to protect Naruto Uzumaki no matter what? Suande asked as she opened her eyes and waited for both Samus and Yugao's answer. Yes, both females said simultaneously, which surprised Samus how quick the purple-headed woman was to answer but said nothing. Tsunade smiled once again as she saw the blonde girl react to Yugao's answer but then dropped it, if you care about his safety then it would be wise to keep him away from this mission when Tsunade saw Samus confused expression she turned to her assistant for her to inform them, Shizune nodded and stood in front of the two females. As you know Samus-san, these parasites feed off anything with a strong power source Shizune said as she brought out some samples, as you can see here these are pieces of the metroids we've collected the dark haired woman held three different vials, Yugao examined each one. The first one is from the parasite that landed here, which you were first pursuing Samus nodded before activating her power, although you couldn't see it, Yugao had her eyes widen at the armored Samus Aran, it was an impressive power up close indeed. Samus stepped closer as she scanned the same two samples she had seen before. Scanning, she recognized the first one, it was a piece of a normal metroid, the second was one that had absorbed the Kyubi, the nine-tailed fox chakra Samus said as Shizune nodded with a surprised look on her face, that's right. The third one is a bit tricky Shizune said as she held out the vial containing a red shard to Samus, it's got the same properties as the previous sample but it also contains faint trails of Naruto's chakra. Scanning, 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 complete. Small tracess of two unknown power essence detected. Samus used her visor to analyze the red crystal, sure enough Shizune was right, it had two unknown elements that she guessed were the Kyubi and Naruto's. This particular Metroid seemed to be fond of Naruto as it had drained nearly all of his chakra Shizune lifted her hand before pointing at Samus, I had trouble patching you up while you were out, during your fight, your body was exposed to these shards the medic nin said as she raised the vial to prove her point, and because of that you were able to absorb some of that power. It took her a while to process what Shizune meant but when she did, Samus was taken back by the news, na Naruto's inside me. Samus stuttered as she grew red in the face, Shizune smiled and then nodded, precisely. Yugao couldn't help but frown behind her mask, but that is beside the point, what those metroids see in Naruto is nothing but an infinite supply of power, putting him on this mission would endanger his life Tsunade said as she sat on her desk. Yugao nodded to herself, I see now, it would be best if he was not involved. As you two move to our Rakan Nin, we will have a perfect opportunity to move Naruto. Tsunade pulled a small scroll from her desk and handed to Shizun, who then gave it to the purple-headed woman. However Samus was too caught up with her own thoughts to notice, with Naruto far away from the Metroids, it would definitely make this mission much easier, Samus then turned to Yugao and examined her. But can I really trust this person to get the job done? Her blue eyes narrowed, Samus didn't believe that someone like Yugao was going to easily work together, the masked woman already didn't like her so it was going to be tough. Samus then reverted to her zero suit form and examined her body a bit, 
She didn't feel any different, she felt perfectly healthy so why was having Naruto's chakra still making her feel strange? When Naruto had been awakened by Captain Yamato, he had been confused as to why he and a group of Junin had been assigned to a mission all of a sudden, not only was it a mission to an island but the mission was S-ranked class, with so little time Naruto barely had any time to pack, in fact he hadn't packed at all, Yamato had a backpack filled with his basic needs ready for him. But what about my condition? Naruto asked as he raised his bandage covered arms. Don't worry this is a simple mission Naruto, I doubt you'll be engaging any fights Yamato said with a nervous smile. Even though I just said that we are taking an S-rank mission Yamato kept his fake smile on but began sweating as Naruto stared at him, damn it. Has he got on? With nothing else to say Naruto smiled a bit before nodding, Yamato sighed as the blonde turned to get dressed, why was he always put on these certain situations? It was just before noon and Naruto's team had already been traveling quite some time, Naruto had been quiet for most of the trip except in the beginning of their mission where he was asking Yamato, Guy, and even Aoba about the mission, it turned out that it was a dull S rank mission. I hope Samus didn't think I left her out Naruto thought to himself, with his sensei rushing him to the gates of Konoha, Naruto was unable to stop by Samus room to let her know, he had been smart enough to leave a note on his door so she could hopefully know of his whereabouts, he wanted to finish this mission already so he could return to Konoha. But with all this that's going on, Naruto examined his team as they walked, he looked up forward and saw that Yamato was taking the lead, Naruto turned his head back and saw Guy in the back, both Yamato and Guy were equally far apart from him while Aoba was right next to him, usually this wouldn't surprise Naruto as it was a way to protect yourself from incoming attacks but seeing how everyone was acting was starting to make this mission a bit fishy. Naruto had to get to the bottom of this, a uh, sensei? Naruto called out to Yamato as he stopped. What is it? Yamato asked as everyone else turned to the blonde. I am going to take a quick bathroom break Naruto said with sheepish smile as he touched his knees together and hopped up and down, it'll be quick before Yamato could say anything else, Naruto skipped to the forest wandering into the wilderness. The wood style user sighed before frowning, he might as well allow Naruto some freedom after all a small piss couldn't hurt anyone. Guy's eyes widened when he realized that he was due for a bathroom break as well, he'll join Naruto as well, he said before running into the wilderness. Are you sure laying Naruto out of our sight is a good idea? I mean the mission was to look after Naruto at all times, Aoba said as he stood next to Yamato. No but if I don't let Naruto take even a bathroom break then hell no something is up Yamato crossed his arms over his chest as he remembered how Tsunade had clearly explained that Naruto wasn't to be out of their sight. If Naruto found out that the blonde woman he has been hanging around with is off to find those things they've been fighting, then we can predict what Naruto would do at this point, Aoba, who didn't really know what was going on with the blonde woman, even knew that Naruto would run off without another word. Exactly, that's why we should NT let him go out so carelessly, he already has the Akatsuki after him, no need to make matters worse, Yamato looked at the road up ahead before turning to the path Naruto and Guy had disappeared to, we are almost to the ship, once we're there we'll be able to get him to the location where the Hachibi is. Yamato stared at the direction Naruto had gone towards, he was really taking his time. Don't tell me. His eyes widened when he realized that Naruto had chosen the chance to escape. Come on on Naruto-kun. Tell me how you went to the bathroom with on using your hands. The voice of Maida Guy put Yamato at ease, both Naruto and Guy came from the nearby bushes they had disappeared to, the Junin had been pleading his rival student about his ability to piss without the use of his hands. But Naruto wouldn't budge, his lips were sealed, a secret that would probably never be revealed. Alright then we should NT be too far now Yamato alerted everyone as he once again took the lead. As he had his back turned and everyone else was looking forward Naruto narrowed his eyes as he tried to bandage his arms back on, it seems Yamato sensei won't tell me if I ask him and if I do I get the feeling hell stop me from going anywhere it wouldn't be the first time Yamato had prevented Naruto from acting, back at the cage summit was proof of that. I'll just wait until I've gotten enough distance from them, in the meantime I'll just. Naruto. The bushier brow sensei had called out, snapping him out of his own thoughts, you're falling behind. It's very unyouthful. Naruto nodded before grinning, oh, sorry, he said with a sheepish expression. Honestly Naruto if the hero of the leaf village is going to be empty in the head then I don't think many people will look up to you, especially the ladies Aoba teased making Naruto scoff and frown. I don't need fangirls, Naruto exclaimed as he crossed his arms. Are you sure you wouldn't want Sakura or Hinata? I've heard Ino has got an eye on you now, Yamato said without looking back, he might as well enjoy teasing the hero of the leaf. Maybe my little Tenten? said Guy as he was oblivious to Aoba and Yamato's teasing. No, they're my friends I wouldn't want them, but I thought you liked Sakura? Yamato asked. I did I mean I do but, 
But what? Has Naruto Uzumaki moved on? The wood style user was actually beginning to grow interested in Naruto's love life for some reason. No, I just don't want them like that, Naruto tried to argue, he still loved Sakura but maybe not like he used to, he was still confused, still trying to figure out what he felt for Sakura, for Hinata and even the girl from another world, Samus Aran. What do you mean? Guy asked as he was also curious what was troubling the blonde. What I mean is that ever since I became this hero, the village girls have been only acknowledging me for that reason, Naruto paused for a moment, he didn't want that he was glad the girls liked him but he didn't want someone just because he was a hero, not after all he's been through, not in that way. I don't want Sakura for that same reason or anyone else for that matter his words silenced whatever was left of the conversation the group had. All three Junin knew what he meant, if Naruto wanted someone then he was going for a woman that would love him for him not because he was famous. As they continued to traverse into the forest, Naruto looked down somberly, in the opposite gender department he was clueless, he thought he liked Sakura as she was the prettiest girl to capture his attention when he was little but now Naruto was feeling something else, something for someone else. Naruto's face suddenly glowed red and somehow he started to produce steam, the reason was because of yesterday's awkward moment with Samus, the entire night Naruto had been tossing and turning in bed wondering what if. Oi Naruto's imagining something perverted Aoba said casually. Am not, the blonde retorted, Naruto for someone your age that is very youthful and unyouthful at the same time guy said as he patted the blonde in the back with a boisterous laugh. This is going to be a long trip, Yamato said with a long sigh. Samus wanted to understand why this woman, Yugo Azuki was tormenting her with glares and nothing but harsh words, was it because of all the time she was spending with Naruto was too much for her? As far as she knew, Naruto had no knowledge of this purple-headed woman, maybe the next time Samus is around Naruto shall ask and get to the bottom of it but for now shall have to deal with it. Samus jumped from tree to tree and was nearing closer to Yugo. Samus wanted to tell the Anbu Nin to slow down but Samus went against the thought because ITD be a weak move in front of the person who dislikes her the most at the moment. If you can't keep up then maybe you should turn around and go back, I've got no use for dead weight. And with those words as cold as ice sent Samus ticked off. TCH Samus scoffed at her words and took it as a challenge. Jumping to the next tree, Samus grabbed onto the branch and quickly swung before flipping to the next branch up ahead. She made quick haste and eventually caught up to the mask woman and passed her. Yugo was caught off guard when the blonde girl had passed her and soon enough she was speeding up till they were shoulder to shoulder. Both females felt threatened by each other's presence. Yugo decided to break their tension by throwing a low kick while in midair but Samus was quick to avoid it, she jumped back before landing and took a guarded stance, Samus knew this was going to happen eventually. Yugo landed opposite from her, ready for a fight. Yugo didn't say anything but Samus could tell that she had been itching for this even if she couldn't see her face. For a few seconds neither said anything, both stood completely still, waiting for the other to make the first move, a cold breeze flew in between the both of them, like a standoff, Yugo felt like the blonde was ready to make the first move but she beat her to it and charged forward throwing three shuriken at Samus as a distraction before jumping high in the air. Samus was quick on her reflexes as she had ran towards the slew of shuriken but slid on the ground, avoiding anything contact with them. She then looked for the purple headed woman and noticed she had disappeared. Over here, before Samus could register where she was, the girl was sent flying across the forest by a powerful thrust kick to her back. Her body was slammed against a tree. Samus didn't have much time to recover as Yugo came at her with a combination of kicks and punches. However, the blonde girl was lucky enough to block her attacks and counter her with a flip kick to Yugo's chin. Yugo flew back and her mask came off. The Anbu Kunoichi avoided her face from being seen by the blonde. She landed on her feet with her back turned against the blonde. Yugo then proceeded to walk casually to where her mask had fallen. So you do got some bite on you, good, now I know you are not much of an anchor she said as she picked up her mask and putting it back on. This ticked the blonde bounty hunter, they were wasting time by picking a fight and she had the nerve to treat it as some kind of test, well she wasn't going to let it end so easily. Is that what you say every time you get your ass kicked? Yugo was easily set off by her words. Samus was surprised and couldn't believe what had come out of her mouth, it wasn't like her, she just wanted to get to her mission already but something was burning inside her and wanted to shut this woman up once and for all. You bitch, Yugo was furious, she was done with this, to hell with the mission she was going to cut this woman up and send her back to wherever the hell she came from. The Kunoichi had her katana ready to unsheath as she charged at her enemy, Samus also had her weapon ready as well and ran towards the purple headed woman, both were about to finish each other off right in the middle of the forest. Yo. Suddenly a silver-haired man said casually as he had his cyclops eye smile while having his hand up in the air as a greeting. 
Yugo and Samus stopped right when they were about to clash and looked at the masked shinobi standing in the middle of their battleground. This was their intel, it had been quite a long while since anyone had a decent conversation, the trip had dragged and now Naruto was starting to get irritated, something was definitely up and he wasn't going to wait any longer, coming to a halt, this caught everyone's attention, Yamato, Guy, and Aoba turned to the blonde who had his arms crossed and looked rather unpleasant. Naruto, what's wrong? Guy asked but the blonde stood quiet, he only scanned his surroundings, the place they were was looking like to be a harbor but before they were going any further Naruto wanted some answers. Yamato sensei he said before turning his head sternly towards the wood specialist shinobi, what exactly is going on? Yamato was surprised at Naruto, he had caught on and knew something wasn't right, Yamato quietly prepared his jutsu. I am sorry Naruto but, he raised his palm and activated his wood barriers, this is for your own good. Before Naruto could act he was surrounded by bars of trees and branches, imprisoning him, the blonde grunted and cursed at his elder ninja, why? It's Tsunade Sama's orders Aoba answered before sighing, he had hoped to avoid Naruto fighting back but even he knew that was inevitable. That's right, if you were to continue to stay at the village then you would present danger to the people, especially with its current state, Yamato said as he crossed his arms, your Kyubi chakra has become number one food source for those nasty bugs. Naruto's eyes widened at the mention of the Metroids. Your new friend has teamed up with Yugo to infiltrate any more Metroids surrounding the area and clear it from danger Aoba summarized the plan to the captive blonde. Wait, wait wait. Naruto repeated the two of them isn't enough suddenly Naruto could feel his heartbeat, a sharp pain went through him as he remembered something, he saw a vision of tiny red dots surrounding a giant red one, the tiny red dots had all but blinded him till he could only see red, back them he had not thought of it that much but that red light was the Kyubis. It's fine, they are not alone, Kakashi was also assigned to the mission. Even if his sensei was there Naruto still didn't feel good knowing that, something in his stomach made him worry, you guys have to let me go, they need my help. I am sorry but this is from the Hokage herself Yamato said, not looking like hell ever consider freeing him, besides this is for your own good, if you run into the enemy then they'll stop at nothing to obtain the nine tails chakra it seemed these days everyone or everything was after the Jinchuriki for their power, Yamato was getting tired of it. Don't worry Naruto-kun, Kakashi can take care of himself and from what I've heard is that your new friend is capable of taking care of herself as well, Guy said with a strong thumbs up. And Yugo is strong too, she isn't in the Anbu for no reason after all the glasses wearing Junin said. Naruto let out a breath out, he knew they wouldn't free him no matter what he said to them, well I knew you'd all say that and, well, it's time to stop with this joke, Naruto then let out a mischievous grin. Joke. Yamato questioned but before he could get any kind of answer Naruto turned into a puff of smoke. Well he isn't called unpredictable for nothing, Aoba said with a sheepish smile while Yamato stared into the spot Naruto was at just a few seconds ago, his eyebrow twitched in rising frustration. N-A-R-U-T-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-
He jumped away and then quickly evaded another Metroid going for him from behind. His foot was caught in a trap by another hiding Metroid, Kakashi's clone was unable to move and that's when the flying Metroid came to his view before lighting up blood red, Samus eyes widened in disbelief, the creature lit a small light in front of itself and that's when it shot a bright red beam at Kakashi's clone, destroying its existence, the small organisms then retreated to the forest back to hiding leaving small bewildered. I believe these creatures have evolved since your arrival Samus San Kakashi stated and dragging his foot on the dirt making a line, this is the perimeter, I sense they have something planned further ahead but they won't let anyone come to this point. Samus knew they were changing ever since they took up Naruto's power but she didn't imagine them to be this intelligent this quick even when they still have their infant forms. We should retreat Samus was alarmed all of a sudden, this place is too dangerous. Who made you leader all of a sudden? Our mission is still not over, Yugo said as she readjusted her mask. You don't understand, this place is not safe, even if our mission is to destroy every single one, it just isn't possible right now. Samus and Yugo were bumping heads once more and Kakashi didn't want to get involved he just stared from the sidelines. You want to see who decides takes up that leader position? Yugo said as she slowly unsheathed her weapon. I am going to put you down to sleep and drag you back to the village if that's what it takes, Samus said as she was ready to pick up the handgun. With another standoff happening Kakashi was still lost and felt out of place, both girls glared at each other coldly, their hatred towards each other was growing by the minute. However a third presence made itself aware to the both girls, Samus and Yugao's eyes widened when they felt it and without hesitation they acted, Yugo quickly unsheathed her katana and slashed towards Samus but she ducked to the ground and charged her weapon before firing it at Yugao's direction, she dodged as well before rolling to the side, both of the girls then got back to back. Kakashi saw as the two bickering girls attacked each other only to hit the metroids coming from behind them, the one behind Samus had been split in half and the one behind Yugo had a hole through it. Both had been killed but the one-eyed Junin couldn't tell if they were actually going for the enemy or at each other. Not bad, maybe after we're all done with this mission it'll take you up on a friendly spar. Samus couldn't help but to smirk at her words, define spar for me cause I doubt you know the meaning of it. The blonde and purple headed girls were too busy with their own conversation that they didn't care about the growing number of metroids at the moment. Kakashi also had his own problem to deal with, metroids surrounded him which left him no choice but to fight back. He jumped to the trees and placed a paper bomb onto the branch before fleeing away as several parasites chased him, the detonation was able to take out a few number of them but still left Kakashi enough to deal with. Oh boy, this doesn't look too good for me, he said with a dull tone. Samus had her Varia suit activated, she couldn't take any chances, right at this moment they were unpredictable which made them extremely dangerous but then again when weren't they dangerous? Yugo had no trouble slicing them up in pieces, she jumped high and skipped from tree to tree sand was able to deliver a lethal cut to a group of metroids each time, once she reached the top of the tree's height she gracefully fell back down to the ground, she smirked before she whipped the substance off her katana, Yugo motioned back to her team but was suddenly restrained by her foot. Damn it, she cursed, she had been caught in the same trap as Kakashi's clone, the buried metroid had its fangs clenched deep into Yugao's foot. Samus noticed Yugao's predicament, she quickly finished off a metroid before running off to her teammate's aid, however she was intercepted by more metroids, this time they snarled at her and their movement started to tremble as they flew, then they all lit up blood red like a match on fire their flames surrounded their small body. Gah! Yugo cried in pain, all of them had changed into blood red metroids and they were treating Yugo like an animal caught in bear trap, a dozen of them surrounded her and each one flew with their fangs out, just enough to cut her skin. Samus charged her beam and fired it at one but it proved to be ineffective as it bounced away. Kakashi had his rakery but it only disrupted their flames. Nothing's working he said with the sherigan activated. We have to get to her, Samus couldn't take it anymore, her pain screams reminded her of when Naruto was mauled by them, they're just playing with her, like she's just a it was then that Samus noticed the familiar scene, Yugo had used her sword to cut the metroids up and now they were doing the same with her except they just torturing her. Impossible, Yugo was in a critical condition. First they gave her small cuts that compared to a paper cut but then they got much more sever, she was getting covered in her own blood, the pain her leg didn't help, it only made things worse as she couldn't stand, she was on her knees and the metroids continued to slice her up, Yugo knew they were enjoying her pain. With the launch of a missile, Samus was able to clear a path, however that didn't stop the metroids it only slowed them down, Kakashi was able to help when he used his bombs once more, he threw a kanai with a paper bomb attached to it and aimed it to the center of the flock they were sent flying and scattered to the trees. Just maybe, I can use my Kamui to help Samus came to Yugao's aid but was blocked by the metroids that had her captive, she didn't know their weakness, so far they seemed immune to everything, 
Samus shot missiles at every red flame she could see and ran towards the girl's side. Hey, you go, Samus called her for the first time but the girl was weak, she had lost too much blood. The blonde grabbed her arm and placed it over her head so she could carry her put Yugo screamed out in agony, her foot was still trapped, shit, she had forgotten about the trap, I can't fire without hitting her too so friends I end here. 